This is H. Dizzle, and you're listening to the guy's spot. This is the no cussing edition, I think. Uh, Bonafide said he's cussing too much before the show started. But we're live this show. We got transsexual porn star Juliet Stray coming on. Metalhead will be calling on to talk about his NAGA update. And sitting in, we got Dr. David Wilson, PhD. What's up, doctor? How's it going? And Bonafide Hustler. Bonafide Hustler here. And I am the host, H. Dizzle Jones. And I'm scared of cockroaches. I'm so scared of cockroaches, even my ego collapsed earlier. And I was screaming like a little bitch in front of my two co-hosts. Like, I've, 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 I've been in some major fist fights for like 30 minutes straight. And I've had some pretty big people fuck with me. And I've, I've been able to hold my own and not shown any fear. And a little fucking cockroach. I swear this thing was crawling at zero miles an hour. It was literally... And you know what was the most embarrassing part? After I screamed... Did you guys hear me screaming, by the way? Fuck yeah, we heard you screaming. Uh, that was so embarrassing. Like, I, my ego was like, stop screaming. But, like, my mind was, it's a fucking cockroach. And then I realized it was a fucking beetle. That was the most embarrassing part at the end of it. <laughs> It, it was a it was a beetle. It wasn't even a cockroach. You know, I can help you with that. How, you know, I kind of got over it because I have lived at an apartment complex that was nothing but cockroaches. You know, and that was the most terrifying uh, thing to me. After a while, it was just straight up. Uh, like my my roommate would just be dropping like fake cockroaches in drawers just to hear me scream because it'd be the funniest thing to him in the middle of the night. I, I'd come home from work or something. He just hear. Ah! And I'd realize it was a fake cockroach. But that whole experience kind of got me over him. But now I've cleaned up my house to where there's no more cockroaches to where the fears come back. It's, it's like I've gotten used to not seeing these things. If, if I get exposed to them for a while, it, the fear goes away. Uh, yeah, it's actually progressive desensitization. <laughs> desensitization therapy. You basically expose a person to whatever they're afraid of gradually. You may start with just talking about it visualizing it and then moving into talking about or showing pictures and then eventually you get them into a situation where they're right in front of the thing they're afraid of fuck that shit is that how white people move <laughs> into the hood like in austin i'm not it's like the scariest parts of the hood you see all these like uh, uh hipster guys moving in i'm like they, they don't they they don't seem like they're, they're they they can fight or anything but they don't seem scared at all and, and, and they're i've seen some hipsters move into some pretty uh scary neighborhoods in austin that's because they prep themselves. They look at pictures of you know scary people that they might be afraid of, and they research crime statistics. Then they watch YouTube videos, and then no, they I hope just get into the hood for a second. No, I hope I hope it's that just Austin's a really awesome place to live. Yeah, I was actually gonna say it's Austin, dude. Like the hood in Austin is not scary at all. It's 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 actually pretty. It's it's pretty cool for for the worst part of Austin is not bad at all. You know. But Bonafide, what are you what are you talking about here? You don't want to cuss anymore. Because I know I know you you're just like oversensitive about everything. What are you talking about? But but you, you don't even want to cuss on the show anymore, although no, I, to I the noticed last show, bro. Yeah, I, I noticed you do cuss a lot because I sent a clip uh whenever we were getting the, the uh NASA scientists on the show, I had to send a clip of what we were talking about on the previous show. And it was just bona fide cussing up a storm. And now I got all these scientists in NASA listening to bona fide cursing. And I had to tell them, don't, don't curse anymore. So you noticed it yourself. I've just noticed it myself. Anytime I get around, out, away from my YouTube channel, um, I just, I don't know. It's like sailor mouth, dude. So I'm just going to try to actively just reduce it. I'm not going to stop cussing because it's fun to cuss. But, but do you curse a lot in your personal life? Um, no, not really. I cuss a lot when I start getting around friends and, you know, beer and whatever but for the most part i don't i keep it pretty professional yeah because I, I i and i notice you're real sensitive about everything around you i cuss a lot because you cuss a lot i don't cuss that much it's bullshit just when i get really angry which is like every day you're angry about <laughs> something dude <laughs> but okay so uh, here's why i think you're so sensitive like one of the fans left some kind of joking message and I, and I know this guy he's super cool and he's been our fan from back in the day wyatt watson and he, I think he was joking around about uh, don't don't make Disney jokes, and you took it all personal. No, because his Twitter message to me said, 
uh, you should be less condescending to your fans and all that stuff. And I was like, who the fuck is this? I dude? think he's joking. Cause he, fuck and bro, that. he's not joking. Listen, as we get more and more popular, you're going to have random people dude, that I found that. us the day before and like, you're a bunch of freaking assholes. You, you know, you're going to get these trolls ringing around. That dude, just are going to be trying to get under our skin. And that you, you're going to have to ignore those kind of people. Dude, I ignore, dude, you don't have to tell me about haters. I got haters all over the place, always hating on my workout stuff, always hating on here and there. But this one was kind of interesting because I'm only like in the fourth podcast here. And this dude was like, hey, you need to stop being so condescending and lay off the Disney jokes. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I didn't even like slam any Disney jokes. I just say what I want to say and it's not like a big deal. Anyway, so... No, no harm intended, dude. Okay, hey. We can, we can uh, have a thumb war one day if you want to, bro. <laughs> I've seen this guy in person. He's pretty big. He's not bona fide big. Is he but fucking big thumbs? He, he's like big bone big. Like This is the kind of guy like you know like he doesn't work out, but if he decided to, to get angry at you, he'd fucking rip you apart. Like Just one of those natural, primal, just uh, born, born huge and, <laughs> and, and mean guy. He's not, a, he's not a mean guy, but I could just tell this guy can hold his own. Well, that's good. So don't don't piss off White Watson, man. We got him on got him on our side, man, which is good. I That's want him good. on our I side. I didn't even know about that until I walked in today, and you were like, "Yeah, that dude's fucking awesome." I was like, "Oh <laughs> shit! Well, what the fuck? Thanks for telling me." Yeah. Hey, I got some news from uh, our guest last show. Uh, I don't think uh, Doctor Wilson was in here, but but Bonafide was there. You you, you know Special K, right? He's always yeah. up to some shit. He he's literally now he's seen our show as a way to like get him on some new kind of illegal shit going. Like his he, he so he emails me after the show and he's like, "Hey guys, I see you can reach a lot of people. How about this? We can this is a, I copied and pasted the email into, into into my show notes. Let me just read it here. How we can sell and this is in his Pakistani uh like Broken dialect. English. Yeah, yeah. How we can sell bootleg software for Mac and Windows in Linux, Xbox, PlayStation games, in all Adobe softwares, in new movies. I got all that. Ask Hustler how I mail or sell to audience. We all can do business together. That just screams like FBI <laughs> knocking on your fucking door. Dude. I think crazy. the FBI is already knocking on that door. I don't want uh, this anything brain to do is with like this guy. Functioning at like the I'm most shady you, level possible. Yeah, all he, everything he thinks of, and that's why it's so profitable because he has no competition. Like everything he thinks of is just shady shit. It is not like everything. If you notice, every time we've like every few months we catch up with him, he's on a new kind of shady thing. Yeah, uh, Doctor Wilson's laughing. What's so funny? I just can't believe he was that bold to send an email like that. That was hilarious. Like, <laughs> well, he knows that I buy and resell things. That's why kind of what I do in the background. Oh, so maybe that's, that's, that's why he was contacting me about it. And you saying ask uh, Bonafide, right? Because he's trying to figure out a channel to get it to a, a you know like masses, and he's trying to cut us into this shady deal. Maybe but, he heard about Sleepy, dude, and he's like, well, you know what, Bonafide kind of wow. <laughs> it's on that level. I haven't had a Sleepy call in a while, so I don't. Know Is Sleepy just on. giving up on you? I have no idea, man. That's I good. Still, I, I need That's something good. from Home Depot in about a week, so I'm probably going to have to call him. <laughs> I think Sleepy, and, and Dr. Wilson, Sleepy is this guy that he ran into at a... Uh, he approached me at an academy. Yeah. And uh, he just said, I was, while I was casually looking at some running shoes, he came up to me and was like, Hey, man, you want to... And I was like, what? Do you, what? And he goes, how would you like a $158 gift card for $100? And that was basically, <laughs> and it's a shady dude too. Yeah, and now he's like made like a, a deal with this guy where he got some some gift cards off him, and I think he's realizing that it's some shady yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, I think I think what you said was right. I think the guy has stolen. He has like a ring of people that steal stuff from Academy and then return it there, mm -hmm. and then he gets gift cards for the amount. Yeah. And then I'm the guy who buys the gift cards. So I don't know. I told him I was like, as long as I don't know, I'll buy some off of you. He's like, cool. Well, then put me on your phone. As Sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess Sleepy got caught, man. He hasn't caught you. So, oh, man, I might look bummed out. But it's because I had to drop my daughter off for the first time. Like, this is the first time I've been oh, yeah, separated. She's not from, here, huh? Yeah, I, had to, I took her to, my wife loves, like takes her to where her hometown is, which is a decently safe place. But, like, we have to make a handoff at Nuevo Laredo. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like the number one spot where there's gang violence. 
and there's just people getting beheaded and and they're like they're like a few like six months ago they they just pulled a busload of people over and stole the bus and then chainsawed like the heads off of like 80 people so why would you drop off your kid there well i kind (laughs) of listen to my wife and she says it's 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 safe during the daytime so i have to go by that uh so it, it sucked. It was the first time seeing my, my beautiful daughter all smiling and happy, and we handed her off. And, hey, Dr. Wilson, what, what I was wondering about this, at what age does attachment with kids start? Because she, she doesn't seem to give a damn. It, she's like eight and a half months old, and she no. was like all happy about it and didn't cry. And with, but she's around these people we handed her off to. It's other family. Yeah, attachment, I mean, I would say it even starts in the womb. But um, usually if you're – you're functioning as an adult. You're going to associate verbal kind of connections. And that really, that part of the brain doesn't develop till I'd say like around 18 months or so, give or take. So it's more facial features and cues. And she's learning to uh, understand what your cues mean. So when she's crying and you show, you mirror her upset, that's going to help her to form healthy and secure attachment. But overall, attachment can happen from zero to four years old as the personality develops and continues to be modified throughout the rest of life yeah because I, I talk to her every night on skype mm-hmm. and uh but their connection is so bad over there in mexico that uh she can't re- i can't see her facial features and she can't really see mine <laughs> we just hear each other's voice but yeah that was pretty pretty sad for me man uh just leaving my daughter and but it's cool the way technology is nowadays where it's it's like it was sad for a little bit but then I know where she is at all times. It's it's like at a second I can call her from my cell phone and see her on FaceTime, you know, like immediately. Yeah. So it's it's pretty amazing how it's really she's so far away. It's she's still here, you know. Yeah. How old is she again? She's like eight and a half months. Okay. Well, she probably knows. I mean, she knows the sound of your voice, and they've. I can't. You know, I didn't prep for this at all, but there was a study that they did, and they showed just real crude features, like of like dots for eyes and a triangle maybe for the mouth just those three points and babies were more attracted to the three points as opposed to the uh the eyes with the mouth up above them so it was like an up upside down face so just seeing the basic features of you is probably pleasing to her okay so she can kind of see the dots that's just just basically what it looks like on their skype connection is just some dots and some lines i guess <laughs> it's that bad but yeah, uh, that's the only bummer thing. I gotta leave her out in this like almost like war zone area, and do like a little handoff. How long is she there for? Uh, just a couple weeks. Yeah. So what are you gonna take care of in the, a couple weeks? You're gonna just work a lot on of the show. Sex, or you're gonna man. just a lot of sex with my wife. <laughs> that has been like uh, ignored for all these months. You Actually, to, not. Just... But th- it, it's weird, man. The, uh, we we me and my wife still have sex, but it's it's like now it's like wild sex. That my daughter's gone. It's not <laughs> like the same. Because we only do the same, the most silent position because my, my daughter's in the same room. And, and let me ask you this. At what age can I stop having sex in the same room as my baby? Because oh, she's just fast asleep now, and we're 100% sure that she's not aware of anything going on. For that, I, I've heard it range all over the place. I think it's, it comes down to, like, I have a friend who is, his entire family slept, slept in the same room all the way up until they were, not in the same bed, but in the same room, uh, until they were in high school and stuff. And he's a clinical psychologist now. And, and he can hear his mom and dad having sex? He asked him that. And uh, he was like, did you guys ever have sex? And they were like, yeah. And the kids never knew. So Damn. Yeah. So, I mean, is... I mean, if your daughter doesn't see it, I mean, ha- did you ever walk in on your parents having sex? The only time I remember is is one time whenever we were moving to America from India, we all had to stay in my grandma's house in this one room. And I remember my, my mom, my dad saying something to my mom and, and, and I was acting like I was asleep, but I was I was wide awake because they were, they were really fighting at that time. So I was real worried they were getting divorced or whatever. And I, and I hear my, my dad say something, and then my mom's like, no. And then my dad says, I wasn't even asking you for sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest I've got. And I was like, whoa, they have sex. Oh, my God. Gross. Yeah. I didn't even know much about sex back then at all, really. I just I kind of knew something. I think I was like 10 or 11. I kind of knew some like what it was, but I just knew it was kind of gross. What about you, Bonafide? What about what were we asking? Have here? you ever? You're not listening. I am, but I'm like listening to your story. I'm not really listening. No, I'm saying, have you ever 
seen or kind of come close to walking in on your parents having sex? No, never. But my parents have walked in on me like many times. What? With like multiple different girls. Not oh, at the see, same that, time. that wasn't even a chance with me. I just wasn't having sex when I was living with my parents. It would always <laughs> happen in California too. Really? Yeah, and always. What you, like what do For you do? For some reason, there's no fucking lock on that door in my room. And with at least four different girlfriends, yeah, it was it was like that. You seem kind of proud of it. Do you get embarrassed, or is it something? Well, it's not. I mean, all we, all we, all you can see are like the, the shadows of two feet, and you're like, "Fuck!" And then you try to throw the girl off of you, or you try to get off of her, and then by the time the door opens, it's like all these bed sheets are like flying all over the place. And I think she figures it out. <laughs> and do you, do you do you say anything, or we do just, they say we, anything? No, we just say we're really tired. You know, this is always in the morning too, for some reason. And these are girls that spend the night. These are my, they were my previous girlfriends. Oh, okay, so you were dating them. Yeah. Okay. But for some reason, because my, my mom would always wake me up in the morning for breakfast, you know? And so that's how it would start out. But we would never catch it in time because the hallway is made out of tile. We can't hear the footsteps real well. And so it's different. If you live in a wood house, for example, every board, you know, that people step on, you can hear where they're coming from and stuff, but it's not like that. In not my house. house. Can well, you? you you, you you know that uh, Atole stuff I'm talking about? That's probably what they're pumping her full of right now, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, she's probably... It's like my, an Atole camp, My dude. little girl is probably in Mexico getting Atole. atole Yeah. She, she, she's taking that, she's that Atole She's going to come back like twice as big. You know, I was thinking, like, me doing this workout now, I need to be taking Atole. I don't even know if that's, like, a good thing to do. Don't do it, dude. <laughs> If, if my, my girl's growing that big, I, I need to start but taking couldn't Atole. You, like, here's the weird part about that Atole stuff. It's this, and Wilson, it's just like this weird concoction, like gelat, gelatinous looking concoction of nothing but bullshit. And like, it's, I guess what people feed their kids over there in Mexico, yes or no? You know what? I did some more research on this Atole stuff, and it's not even. It's like sugar, cornstarch. It's all the crazy crappy it's things. It's this packet my, do- my, my wife pours into her formula. And it turns into like jello almost. And they feed it to the And kid. it's basically cornstarch with like extra vitamins. Dude, there's like no. Vi- look at. And it's know. got this like crazy happy per- like cartoon banana <laughs> on the front. Like you know, it's like some big Monsanto type company trying to trick you into feeding your kids this. But I'm reading that's not even meant for kids. It's just some snack they eat in Mexico. Well, what's crazy is when you actually confront your wife with it because we were eating dinner last weekend and you're like, stop feeding my damn kids some Atoli shit. And she was like, Ah, Dizzle, you shut up. Da, da, da. And that's the, all you could get out of her. You couldn't get a reason why. And you're like, why are you feeding her this? And she couldn't tell you. She yeah. just said that it's been handed from generation to generation. And just that's like how they when do her it. mom visits, the thing handed generation to generation, her mom puts, uh, like, breaks an egg and puts in a, a glass of water and then leaves it for like three, four days rotting on a windowsill. <laughs> what? I'm like, why did your mom just do that? Oh, it keeps the bad spirits away. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. So, there was a like on MSN a, a while back. I saw a uh, some uh, a clip on all interesting weird superstitions that are still being like practiced today throughout all different cultures. It's fascinating how some cultures have these w- strange super superstitions, such as putting an egg on a a windowsill. Yeah, I've got one. Filipino people, check this out. So if you really want to get rich, uh, like around New Year's time, Filipino people, or I think a majority of Oriental people, will stuff their wallets full of money as the year turns and it means you'll have a prosperous year so i would walk around downtown with like seven grand in my pocket like new year's eve just walking around with so like, you'd withdraw it out of your own oh yeah i would just bank like account. Um, damn near like you know halfway drain it or drain it at some you know, some of those years i would just drain it all so the way new year's eve yeah new year's eve look for phil look for you know <laughs> That's what I'm saying. so new year's <laughs> eve if you want to make a lot of fucking money somebody looks like halfway filipino just knock them out and t- or pick their pocket or something yeah check the back of their pants if it looks absurdly large back there <laughs> just go for them man but i'm serious like in my mom she would like unload like 30 grand and keep it at the house and just as soon as the year turns she would make sure her hand was on it or something but yeah that was one of the things i did for like the longest time and then the years that i didn't do it I was like, damn, nothing good happened this year. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then I would think back to that one moment. I'm like, dude, I only had like 100 bucks in my wallet that day or that night. Hmm. That's, That's kind of superstitious. And a lot of Orientals slash Filipinos do that. Yeah, it's like, it's like my grandma had a lot of superstitions too growing up. It's ridiculous, man. But I'm, I'm glad we're getting away from all that crap because we are in... 
2012, man. Really? 2013? 2013. And guess what? NASA. NASA. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. NASA, yes. What I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to say is I'm pretty proud we were, had a NASA. Uh, what was she? She was a uh, astrophysicist. astrophysicist. Yeah. Yes, dude. I was pretty stoked because I was listening to the NASA uh, yeah, conference that, call. They had conference a conference call. I listened call. to it, too. Did you? Hell yeah, I did. I couldn't find all three references the second time I listened to it. I, I, only, I was trying I got to pull two some clips. I heard two of them. Yeah, there was three of them. And then the second time, I didn't write down the time code on the third one. So I couldn't, I couldn't remember it. But we were actually mentioned on a NASA conference call. It's pretty cool. NASA is a pretty... Uh, uh, Cutting edge. Yeah, and they're transparent in what they do for the most part. Like they like to have, uh, because I think because they're f- like the government really doesn't give a shit about them. You know, they're not funding them, so that I think their deal is like let's get the uh, the population involved to where they'll put pressure on the government to 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 get our stuff done. You know, and fund our projects. They did a really good job of advertising that thing at South by because I just talked to a random person about our podcast like last weekend at dinner time, and he was like. When I brought up NASA, he's like, dude, did you see on South by Southwest, they had this giant telescope thing, and they were advertising this telescope. It was crazy, man. I wish I could have made it out to that display. And I'm like, dude, we interviewed that that (laughs) astrophysicist. He's like, what? Seriously? So they did a really good job. I mean, one degree of separation, and I managed to hear from another person that he wanted to go to that NASA thing. Yeah. So I was listening to their conference call. It's pretty cool. They mentioned us. And actually, the chick I was communicating with the whole time, I think her name was Christina. She was mega hot. Oh, my God. You saw her on the conference yes, call? I did. Oh, my God. She was hot. I made the I, connection after the fact because you had said, like, this, this other girl is <laughs> fine, too. I was like, okay. And I looked at it, and I was like, and then the name registered. I'm like, dude, that's the one Dizzle was talking about. <laughs> yeah. She's cute. So I'm going to play a couple of clips here where they actually mention us on a NASA conference call. They talk about the guy spot. So check it out. This is on a actually, and you can listen to this on YouTube if you follow NASA. They got they they they're on there. Right, so Christina, there was also a, a traditional media component to this whole thing too, right? You want to talk a little bit about that? We had them in front of the media throughout the weekend. Um, one um, great visit that we had was on Friday from um, Congressman Lamar Smith, and with him, um, a lot of the local television stations, radio stations came out. We had people stop by from HBO Latin America, from um, Denmark, and uh, radio stations in France. It's just earlier today, Amber um, did a podcast for The Guy Show. There we go. The Guy Show. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> almost got it, man. We almost got it. Hold on. We got a caller from 281 area code. Hey, caller, you're on the air. Houston. You, you know what I think that is? Hello. Who is this? This is Metalhead, Metalhead <laughs> oh. banging, moss thrashing, trash talking, metalhead. out of control, Metalhead. We'll call you later on in the show, bro. Come on, dude. What? You're going to call me on the... Why don't you have me on the air right now? All right, we'll call you. Do you want to call when the porn porn star's on? Are you listening <sighs> live? Oh. Are you listening live? Yes, I'm listening live. Yes, all right. I'm listening all right. live. When the porn you star calls call in, in, we'll let you call in for a question. All right, we'll talk to you later. All right, so here's clip number two. Uh, I think it's so. exciting for me that people are still talking about it because um, one of the, the blogs I stumbled across was um, these people had picked up a comic book. We, we put out a video called Infrared Beyond the Visible. Um, it has amazing graphics, and they made a comic book version of it that we could hand out, which was, is really cool. But you know how you know conferences and conventions go. You take a lot of paper with you, and usually you toss it all. But this blog, you know, these people had actually read through the comic, and they were actually having a podcast to discuss what they had learned from it. And I thought that was so exciting that, you know, that they actually took something away and even weeks after the event, they were still talking about it. And actually, Amber went on their podcast, I believe. Um, yeah, that so, was the one. That was the one I did earlier today. So I think that's supposed to be on iTunes tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. But it's nice to know that that people did take something away, and they're still talking about it. So maybe we're retaining some of that audience that we got. It. Okay, they're probably not even going to get into that. <laughs> part of the podcast we're like going what the hell did we just sign up for I know that's what I was thinking too I was like okay the, the moment they listen to the podcast they're like wait a second Special K was before that yeah it was Special K and Metalhead K. was after that <laughs> dude and Special K was just like hating on his wife and dude they would be like fast forwarding every like 10 seconds and be like fuck 
But that's like, like AK forty seven was talking Bombings. about how his he hates that his wife is so educated and, and smart. But but isn't this like your objective is to cast a wide net on a bunch of different perspectives and issues? I think it's the perfect podcast. They want to get to the younger audience, which is what we have. Mm-hmm. No, it's amazing, but I don't think they they might have not done their homework, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they did, dude. It's you think NASA. so? Yeah, because I sent her an actual clip of the show. What clip did and you, you send were, her? Uh, us talking about the James Webb Telescope the first time, and you were cursing up a storm, bro. Okay. Like I was like, dude, I'm taking a ch- This is what I thought when I sent her that email. <laughs> I'm taking a chance with this, but if they agree to it, it's they know what they're getting into. But that's not an accurate representation of our show because <laughs> we're just talking about one nerdy telescope. Everything else is like... Not having to do with that nerdy stuff, you know? Yeah. But it's cool. They're they're followed up by a transsexual uh, porn star. On the we'll have to episode. follow up with her like <laughs> once a year. Get that, like the telescope Actually, update. I want to get that other guy, uh, Jason Corrali. I saw that guy at South by Southwest. He seems Was he cool. on the conference call too? Yeah, it's that Indian guy, the bald Indian guy. He looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember him. He seems cool He was doing some, spe- uh, some speeches and stuff down there, wasn't he? Yeah, that dude is straight yeah. up like some kind of genius. Yeah, he's super genius. That's to me, it. the biggest geniuses, like I know astrophysicists are pretty smart, but the geniuses are the ones that are creating the hardware and the software and the actual technology behind it. <laughs> to me, that takes – they're creating something actual physical that will go to – to, to the uh, a million miles from Earth, you know? Yeah, I think the true genius is the person that even conceptually thought of building something that could go out there and go, we need to do this, so let's find the funding to get yeah. this done. Well, if he, and that's the genius, I think. It's weird. When I, when I talk to really smart, like, genius people, it, it's funny. The dumbest people I meet are so not humble. They're like, yeah, man, shit, I'm fucking balling up in this car right here, and, and, and I'm a smart motherfucker because I, I, I came up with some stupid thing that made me a little bit of money. When I talk to really smart people, they downplay how smart they are. Like I was talking to this guy I, I met at an event at South by Southwest, and I was like, God, he told me what he did. It was something where he created actual hardware chips and like sped up the, the synapses between the memory or whatever and just sped up this hardware. He actually programmed hardware. I don't know the details. I don't remember it. And I remember saying, God, you are so smart, dude. Like, you're, like you should be proud of yourself. He goes, man... It, it, He's like, I'm just, I'm just uh, uh, riding on. It was a black guy, dude, like uh, with with glasses, big, big, like probably like thirty years old. He goes, I'm just riding on the back of giants, bro. <laughs> so he so was just, like mind fucked you real good. Yeah, he was like, look, the the original guys that figured the original shit out, like while they might not have figured out the details and the the to the level that we figured it out, but they figured it out with nothing. Is basically what he was saying, like Galileo. He didn't have any. He didn't have the internet. He didn't have collaboration. He just figured that shit out. Right now, it's like, like you know, like when you do your 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 YouTube channel where you help people make money. Mm-hmm. It's like you you tell one guy something, or he tells you, "Hey, I, I figured out this little thing I sold for this much," and right. now you add it to your repertoire. You know, all right, right, and he manifested into something totally different. Right, but then it all comes back to me and like my thought process, and I helped someone come out of a hole or something like. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, so now you go to school for computer science and you have the last 200 years of history of every well, invention given to you. Here you go. Learn this right. and then build upon it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I see what you're saying. So he was so humble, yet he was this guy that like his brain power was just way beyond <laughs> any kind of capacity I even like any anything that's going on in my head. Did you, you know? take a, t- a temperature of his head? No, no, it was it was something <laughs> quick. It was at like oblivion. I can't 20 wait to watch degrees that movie, hotter than Dizzles. <laughs> oblivion. Have you heard that movie Oblivion with yeah, Tom Cruise? Yeah, it's the same person that did uh, directed ta- Tron. Just so you know. Oh, get it out! Is, really? Dude. Oh my god, I love that fucking movie Tron. I know. Great. You know what's weird, dude? I'm so happy and proud of myself that I got like an astrophysicist on my show, and they're talking about it on a fucking NASA conference call. Yeah. And I still like don't tell my dad because like my dad just my whole life has Fuck any it, man. every consecutive like better and better. Uh, uh, anything I've done that's built upon my success, I just hear like, uh, uh. so if you don't like, do it don't his way, shit. if you didn't do it his way, it's not worth it. It's right? not even his way. It's just I don't know what or it conventional is. Conventional or maybe something. he's hating on me or what? It's just like if I tell him something I plan to do that's good or that I've done that's good or I show him something like that should impress somebody, especially my dad. Like he should be saying like, God, son, that's yeah, awesome. Dad should be like that. It's You're just right. like. 
uh, like even when I was a kid, I, I, I tell him stuff. It, it's to the point where I don't tell him, and he knows nothing. He about sounds my very life. conventional, though. He 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 just knows me as this weird dude that calls him every couple of weeks to say, "Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's up, Dad?" Like he knows nothing about my life, dude. Like he knows I kind of have a kid, I'm married, but he knows nothing, dude. Nothing. I wouldn't even let him go to my graduation because. I don't know. Is this, you, you can explain this, Dr. Wilson. It, psychologically, it's when I got kind of just put down to where I felt like he didn't care what I wanted to do or wasn't interested in what I had to say. Like It's like, Dad, I remember one time uh, I was driving in Houston. I saw this really awesome tall building. I was like, Dad, one day I'm going to make so much money, I'm going to buy that building. And, you know, it's just a little freaking 12-year-old talking out his ass. And instead of encouraging me, he just went, Ugh. How are you going to do that? You're not going to do that? Uh. Yeah. You know, and then I remember uh, I'd invite him to, like, basketball games and, and things like, hey, Dad, I, 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 we made it to the finals. Like, do you want to come? What do you think? You're Michael Jordan? Uh. Uh. It's like things that make him say, uh. That's what it should be called, man. Like, hey, Dad, I had an astrophysicist on my really popular podcast. Oh, oh! <laughs> like he's just like I, I. I don't know if he's hating or what. I just don't know. I, I this is Metalhead's favorite moment ever on the show. I I I, I bought this car right. It's an Audi uh, Arms Edition. Uh, it's freaking sick, dude. It was like silver with these crazy leather seats that were bright red. You saw it. Yeah, I remember that one. And and I take it to my dad. I'm like, Dad, like. This is one of 150 cars ever built. It's super rare. I'm like, I've got a crazy deal on it. He looks at it, dude, and you could tell he kind of like, like, I guess he like, I don't know. I couldn't tell from his facial expression. He looks at it. He goes, oh, move the car. It's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? Uh. That fucking kills me, dude. I, like, I don't know why I still try to get his attention. Like the last one that I... To where I said, that's it, dude. I don't give a fuck anymore. He's not, I'm not even going to try to tell him like what I'm up to. Like if it's like I think I'm happy. Here's some good news going on in your son's life. Comes to my house, man. I all fixed it up nice. I was like, hey, look, I got this house. I fixed it up. It looks nice, right? I was telling my mom, actually, because I figured like I don't even want to tell my dad. Like what does he give a shit? He's like three rooms away. I hear, oh. Like, he wanted me to hear that from three rooms away. Like, <laughs> like I told my mom, he goes, oh, that was it for me, dude. I was like, fuck this guy, man. <laughs> so I'm not even going to tell him I had an astrophysicist on the show because I can just feel it. Like, when I was – it's like now when I know I'm doing something good in life, I just hear that, oh, like, to where it's – I don't feel happy about anything. It, it's it's just like – I. I no matter what I do in my life, no matter, I could be fucking president of some country, and I'd just like. Uh, it that's sounds all like I hear he's got some background. gigantic walls built up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like mega, like. So I'll never be happy, walls. no matter how successful I am, because I always hear that uh, in but the he's background. Struggling with he wants father figure in the life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So there's like a there's just there's how two giant struggles that? going on. I don't right? care what. Like I don't, I don't even want to like do well in life. It's like because I know if I do, I'm not going to be happy. Well, then what keeps you going? It's my mom saying, "Why don't you be more like that guy?" <laughs> That's all I would hear. Wait, what does she up. point to when she says that, though? Why don't you be more like your neighbor, Brad? And he's like a rich dude. No, she. He was just the only person she knew that, like, she. I guess she thought, like, she didn't know that many people, like my friends. So she saw a friend of mine that was, uh, doing a little bit better than me, or she thought, like, hey, you should emulate this guy. Or like well mannered to me. Yeah, and exactly. Like all that well kind of mannered, shit. or like he's doing good in school. Hey, why can't you? I don't know about like well mannered that? slash podcast industry. <laughs> it's kind of like anything <laughs> goes here. It's funny though. I would as I would surpass these people in life who she always would tell, "Oh, look, you you're doing better than Brad now." Like I would hear <laughs> shit like that. Like she'd call me up, like, "Hey, like, to, like trying to make me feel better." Fuck it, let's have Brad on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. like, Bitch, you're, now you're in my Actually, territory. He's gonna be at the uh, the bachelor party. He's gonna be at the bachelor party. But no, I was watching a movie the other day, and it totally reminded me of uh, how my dad was. Man, I don't know if you've seen this movie, Despicable Me. Oh yeah. Oh my god, it's the funniest clip, and it just breaks my heart because I, I, I'm even pausing the facial expressions on this kid because <laughs> he's got a mom like my dad. It's exact. It's exactly my dad. Like he'll. Ever since he's a kid, he goes up to his dad and or his mom in the movie and goes, "Hey, mom, look, 
I just built like this this rocket ship picture, and I'm gonna go to the moon one day. And his mom's up to no good. She's just reading some fucking magazine, like some some Kim Kardashian like gossip mag. She's just like, eh, like she doesn't give a shit. <laughs> so he comes up to her like like a year later, like, hey mom, I actually built a prototype <laughs> out of pasta, like of this the, the, this uh, that's funny this spaceship. And the mom's like just just watering the garden, like up to no good. Like like this kid is actually working on shit. Showed her this amazing, like, fucking... Is this uh, the clip? Are you going to play it? Yeah, yeah. Now she, I want to see it. She shows him this amazing mock-up, and the mom's like, eh! Like, six <laughs> months later, this guy comes with an actual rocket ship, right? <laughs> and he launches it in the air, and the mom goes, oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> like, and the kid's face just, like, lights up like his mom's going to finally give him some recognition. Yeah. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. Play it. Okay. Yeah. Just play it. <laughs> it's so funny! Oh, it brought it fucking made me sad though, because I was like, damn, this is a little dizzle, dude. The movie's called Despicable Me. Look, Mom, I drew a picture of me landing on the moon. Eh. <laughs> Look, Look Mom, I made the prototype of the rocket out of macaroni. Eh. <laughs> Look, Mom, I made a real rocket based on the macaroni <laughs> prototype. <gasps> eh. <laughs> Wait, that's that's just her her reaction is eh, the whole time. <laughs> Every time he comes with better and better shit, she goes, "Eh, that's my dad, dude. Ever since I was a kid, eh, uh, uh. So you know how that movie turned out because you watched it. So so we... this guy is looking for world domination. And I'm kind of like, <laughs> I want to fucking fuck over this whole podcasting <laughs> industry. You know, maybe maybe it's like nothing will ever. Make me feel good about myself ever because of fucking. Uh, uh, so as soon like, as you watched that clip, you knew it. You were like, "This is." I felt really sad. Was it your calling? Oh my god! No, I was just thought this was the funniest thing ever. You you got to see this movie because this kid's face lights Despicable up. Despicable me. Yeah, okay. this, this kid's face every time he tells his mom, and this was me oh, as a kid. Saw. Every time I tell my dad something, I'm like expecting something like great to come, and it's just like, uh, uh, and then you, <laughs> as a kid, you just lose. All your smile and everything is gone. And that's kind of, you got to see this kid's expression. It's hilarious. The funniest one's the last one where uh, the mo- he actually launches an actual rocket ship. And his, his mom goes, oh, like she can't believe what she's seeing. It's so amazing. <laughs> and his face lights up like his mom's about to like give him some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is. Praise. Yeah, praise. And then she goes, she looks back down and goes, eh. Like it's not enough. <laughs> Look, Mom, I drew a picture of me landing on the moon. Eh. <laughs> Look, Mom, I made the prototype of the rocket out of macaroni. Shit. Eh. Look, Mom, I made a real rocket based on the macaroni prototype. <gasps> <laughs> eh. Oh shit. That's little Dizzle right there, man. Despicable Dizzle. Shit. Hey, before we get before we get to, do, should we get the Doctor David Wilson news? You were on another show, or should we go to the interview? Uh, I could just plug it. Like I was, uh, the, I was on the Advice Show. He contacted me uh, based on a podcast I did with you, and he th- he thought I could have some creative and uh, helpful input on about trauma with children and society's pressure on raising kids and healthy attachment. That was cool, man. I was proud of you, and I was glad to have hooked up that connection. You were on the Advice Show. And, you know, Advice Show is doing a real good job because he's taking a community that really needs some help uh, that doesn't get a lot of, 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 of media exposure or, or people helping them out, and he's going in there himself which is basically like the poor black community. And he's going in there as a black man that's, that's been around that and trying to give people really good advice. And there's a lot of single parents in that, that community. And you were in there to help them kind of what, what tips for single parents. Yeah, and uh, understand the psychological ramifications of beating your child. And uh, it, was, it was really cool because I thought I was only going to be on there for just a brief amount of time. But it was the entire podcast. So I hope I helped those people out and... Uh, yeah, and they had quite a few callers. Let me play a little clip here where you plug the guy's butt. <laughs> because they're so emotionally deregulated by mom showing no emotion. So it's that powerful. And when it comes to parenting, there's uh, the one book, I think I mentioned it on uh, The Guy's Spot, 
which is another podcast that I, I've <laughs> been on a handful of times. It. But it's um, it's a, a book called Brain Based Parenting, and it talks about the neuroscience of healthy caregiving. Why didn't you mention our Twitter, dude? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, you had a very special caller call in also. A uh, very special yeah, caller. So here's a call you took. You're, you're, you're around kids. This opportunity to be mindful and to make a difference and to promote a positive, uh, positive self-image in children. Um, I'm sorry that that happened to you. Hold on. I got a, let me see. got another call coming through. Let's see. Let's see. Hey, area code 832. You on the show? Yes. Hi. Advice show. How you doing? Doing good. Yes, I'm a black male in the Houston area, and I recently um, moved from a, a all white neighborhood to like a black neighborhood. And at the gym, girls, I mean, they tell me when I try to pick them up that I sound too white because my English is so proper, and it's really insulting <laughs> for me as a black man. That is that is that is very insulting. It's kind of saying like you as a black male cannot speak. <laughs> proper English so that we're supposed to be ignorant or speak, you know, a slang 24-7 like we can't be educated. That is, that is very offensive. Now, who are telling you this? Black women are telling you this? Blacks, Mexicans, the browns usually, the brown people. The brown people. Okay, the brown people. so... So okay, brown people got it. <laughs> brown people, got it. I had it. I had the same Hey, what's up? This is Dizzle, too. man. Hey, just just give him a shout oh, out. Oh man, Dizzle, you playing around, dude? <laughs> yeah. That was you the whole time. Hey, this is a great show, oh, hey dude. man. Just listening in. So, all right, I'm gonna get out of the car. He's got silly ears. Got me all serious on this conversation. Holy shit, that's funny. <laughs> all right, if I show later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me going, man. <laughs> What's going on, dude? I just could tell by the voice. I was like, this sounds like I'm playing a joke. Hey, y'all are doing a good job, man. I'll let y'all get back to the show. Sorry. Later. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> yep, that was me. That's pretty funny. You just, like, uh, imp- like improv that whole thing real quick? Yeah. It's pretty good. I was like, I, I need to call Shit, you had me going. And, and, and plug the show. So I did that. But, hey, let's call Let's call the uh, porn star on here. If is, I can. Is it- hey, Juliet. Yeah. All right, there we go. We got you on and with our live show. Sorry, we we, we usually don't use Skype, so we had some issues here. So. It's okay. I um I I totally fucked it up too. So. Okay. So so let me get this straight. You are a transsexual. By the way, this is Juliet Stray, transsexual porn star, and you can find her on Twitter at Juliet Stray. J U L I E. T T E S T R A Y. You don't have a website or anything. I'm, I was a little surprised. I've been working on the website, but I'm not located in Los Angeles. So it's a much lengthier process for me to get the back content and stuff going. Is, is that like where basically you have to be if you're in porn? More or less. Um, I mean, if you're already established and super successful, there are some companies that will fly you in. And what a lot of girls will do is they'll, and this is like mainstream regular porn, not transsexual porn, but you know, they'll fly you in and you kind of piggyback on the, on the plane ticket and shoot a bunch of other stuff while you're in the area. But there's, there's not a lot of companies that shoot she stuff. So I don't really get that lucky. And uh, if, if you, you do this full time, right? I do. Okay, so why don't you just live? Why don't you just live in uh, L.A.? You know, I I live in San Francisco, and it's the transit is cheap. It's like a fifty dollar plane ticket in advance, you know. And it's mostly just like I've been here for I don't know, maybe maybe seven eight years, and I just it's like I'm set, you know. I just love the shit out of this city, and. I have like my whole network and not to mention no car. So it's kind of, it would be a challenge. Okay. And, 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 uh, so you just fly, how often do you get work up there in LA as a, in porn? I assume that you do that full time, right? You don't have any other sources of income. Um, I have no other legit sources of income. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you just, you just, uh, how often do you get work in, in porn? Um, pretty much any time I'm in LA, I'll get booked. Um, I'm planning a trip now. I would say I'm down there. 
I mean, it would average maybe a week every other month, something like that. Okay. Not terribly frequent, all things considered. So most of the porn that you do is in San Francisco? Oh, I do nothing in San Francisco. It's oh. like uh, if I'm in Los Angeles, I'm working. And if I'm in, if I'm in San Francisco at home, I'm just uh, fucking off endlessly day after day. Wow. So you don't have like a side thing that you're into? Um, I've been thinking about taking up bartending because I have a pretty good rack and you get tipped a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so so if so you were thought, a bartender, would you tell them you're a transsexual or would you? I don't think so. Now that's that. See, the question I wanted to ask you because we had a guy on the show previously on a previous episode, Bat, named Batman, and uh, he actually was making out with a girl, and until like kind of he got a blowjob is when she told him that <laughs> he was she she was a transsexual. And that's an interesting time for her to disclose. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's when you're most relaxed. But is that is that kind of normal? Or what, what is the best protocol or kind of what do you do? I mean, I can't speak as to what's normal or not normal. Um, I think, and what I do, like the best idea is unless it's relevant, I don't really bring it up. If I'm going to be like, if I'm flirting with somebody for a free drink, right, I'm not going to bring it up. Um, if I intend on like later putting out for that person, or like making out with them or whatever, I'll I'll mention it. But so, do you mention it before making out or like after making out? I would mention it beforehand if I'm not super drunk. <laughs> yeah. And then what? Usually, what happens? Like, give us a percentage of what happens. Like, you know, fifty percent of the time they're like, oh, and then the other fifty percent. I would say like ten percent of the time people care. The rest nobody nobody gives a shit. Wow, but, but really? My really? favorite. My favorite is, and every guy will say this, the girls don't, but the guys will go, oh, well, that's not, that's not normally my thing, but you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay this time. And I'm like, no, I can tell, like, it's, it's okay every time. It's fine. But that really? sounds kind of high, though. I mean, you, it must be also factored in the kind of places you're hanging out at. I, mean, I would say it's factored in the city I'm hanging out at. It's San Francisco. Yeah, You know, and I'm probably also, like, if I'm going to be even, like, groping or making out with somebody, like, there's alcohol, right? So people are already drunk, or at least drunk-ish. Um, and that, coupled with it being San Francisco and coupled with me being super hot and incredibly modest, you know, yeah, you I think look, you just... You look like Marilyn Monroe almost in this picture I'm looking at on Skype. <laughs> Thank you. Um... I'm sorry we couldn't do video. I just don't have my my little webcam area set up yeah. with proper lighting. I look. Ghastly. Hey, I'm gonna hang up and call you right back because for some reason I'm getting like a, a fuzzy connection. So I'll call you back in like two seconds. Okay. No problem. Yeah, that sounded kind of. It's weird. Uh, it sounded weird. I'm gonna call her back though. If it lets me. Hello. There we go. I should have done that. Hello? Yeah, is that better? Yeah, it's way better. All right, so I'm confused with, like, the terminology when when a guy kind of turns over to a woman or is a woman or there's so many different things. I, I'm confused now because people seem to get offended over everything. Uh, okay, so whenever I was emailing you, I was trying to get the right thing, word yeah. to kind of relate uh, refer to you as. I know you said transsexual and then there's transvestite then there's shemale which you said you use but it's 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 not right then i've heard chicks with dicks um, which i'm pretty sure people don't like to be called that <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah, but- exactly should i call a a and, and i don't know even know and this is not me trying to be rude i just don't know what to call no, that's fine it's somebody it's totally okay that, to ask. yeah somebody um, that is a are you a she, a he? How, I mean, she. How, okay. um, the general regard is like use use the pronouns for whatever the person looks now. like or is trying to to portray themselves as. Okay. Um, if they may not be as passable. Um, 
I think the, what's the word that Dizzle's looking for? Like, what is the word to refer to? Trans woman trans would be like the super woman. political. See, I've never even heard that. I, I have no, That's the that's first for me, too. That's brand new. That, 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 I mean, that's, that would be like if you really wanted to be like definitely not offend people, but like you still needed to like indicate that somebody was trans, you would say trans woman or trans man if they were like fuck angel, right? And going the other way. Okay. Okay. Um, but. I use I use shemale because that's like the porn term, yeah. and I I don't know nobody likes that. <laughs> yeah, so, so I don't think that. But. So when like at what age did you realize? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming like for the first few years of your life, you were a a a, a, a boy or a, a, a oh man. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so, so were you kind of inclined, kind of gay when you were young, and then you decided, hey, you know what, I'm actually. A woman, or at what age do you realize this? Well, okay, so there's two things, right? There's there's gay and straight and bisexual, and then there's like your your gender identity, right? And your sexual identity is the stuff that everybody kind of has a handle on, like, oh, I like to put my dick in butts, or like, oh, I like dick in my vagina, you know, like the configuring stuff, like I like women, I like men, I like both, I like dogs, whatever. Um. And your gender identity is just kind of that, well, you know, like the sex you identify with, like male or female. And I just, like before, it was pre-puberty that I knew something was wrong. So I didn't really have a sexuality, even at the time. I just knew, you just, I just knew I was supposed to be a girl. And it's, it's hard to explain. Was it some um, some event that triggered that thought, or was it just it just well, came out of your own when, head? When you're super young, I kind of feel like there's not much difference between boys and girls. Like you all kind of play the same games, you do some of the same stuff. Um, I think that was particularly the case for me because I went to like a really small private elementary school. You know, there's like ten kids. There's obviously, you know, like gender segregation and like playgrounds or whatever else. But as the girls kind of started becoming girly and like the guys are becoming boyish, I knew that something was just, it was wrong, you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why I felt that way, but I just knew. This is Dr. Wilson. I'm a psychologist. Um, when you're saying wrong, it, it's kind of like it's making me feel bad. Uh, I don't know. Like I would, I would prefer to in, be empowering and say just different instead of wrong. Um, no. Uh, I mean, it's like you're in the wrong body. Like okay. you're 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 waking up, you know, in the body of a cockroach. Like it's the metamorphosis, and it's just not correct. Right. Um, it's it's the super hellish experience <laughs> i'll take your hellish experience because i've seen your penis in the porns and it's bigger than my penis i will trade right now i made it myself oh, it's kind of small though that's kind of weird that you said that no she's kidding. got a she's got a pretty big penis so so is that like i the fact that you think you're a woman a woman and you know that you're a woman is is that weird for you to have a penis so all right so initially it was terrible like it was fucking terrible and that's when your average like trans person will kill themselves generally oh, man. which is when is um, that like college years or is that before college oh or no is that that's, after that's like pretty much middle school through college Whoa. um and we have like this astronomically high suicide rate and i'm not going to try to to pull the numbers out of my ass because i'll just be making them up but um it's super high uh i found that once i got on hormones and what you'll do is you'll get put on estrogen, you know, like a female hormone, and they'll give you pills or injections or whatever else to stop testosterone affecting your body. Mm -hmm. And then after, uh, I don't know, like after like five to six months, like your body kind of normalizes on those hormones and the state of your brain, it, it, it becomes much more tolerable. Like even if your body hasn't changed a lot, it it alleviates some of the angst. And I don't know if that's because there's not as much testosterone to make you angsty or, or what, but um, that helps. And then 
you know, the penis is just kind of like this inconvenience. And now I forget I have it a lot of the time. And like, I have a girlfriend, right? Um, she's also a porn performer and she forgets I have a penis and it's, I don't, I don't know. Like you, you look at somebody and you think of them as a woman and your brain just doesn't, it just doesn't remember that there's like a dick there because it doesn't seem womanly. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it doesn't it's, seem, it's interesting that you said, um, I did have a question. Like, how do you go ahead? How do you go about getting these estrogen things? You just go to a doctor and say, Hey, look, doctor, I'm a little confused. Can you help me? This is a series of visits or do you have to go to a specific doctor and how do they determine, you know, okay, this is legit. This person's really unhappy. We don't want them to go commit suicide. So we're going to put them on estrogen and stuff. Like, how does this work out and take us through that? Okay. Well, um, there's, and I swear to God, this is what it's actually called. It's the Harry Benjamin standards <laughs> of care. What? Um, Named after, I guess, the guy who first set them up. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of politics involved with that, which I'm not going to necessarily bore you with. Suffice to say, like a lot of transsexuals are not real big fans of the standards of care because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of gatekeeping in it. Like you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get things done. Um, but the standards of care dictate that you'll go see a therapist who specializes in like gender issues. Um, which is certainly easier in a larger city. Like you may have trouble with that in like South Dakota or West Virginia. Um, And in that case, because it's not, it's not a law, right? It's just these standards. You don't really need to adhere to them. You can see any therapist. So that's the gatekeeper. What you're trying to get to is that that's the gatekeeper. They see you, they figure out you have issues and then they go forward to get you the medication. you need. Yeah. They'll refer you to an endocrinologist after, Six months. But okay. when you say Definitely gatekeeper, it, it, wouldn't you say that's kind of necessary? Because you don't want somebody that might be at a younger age, a little bit confused, and and and, and do something hasty and then regret their decision, like six right. months later. You know, hey, hey, doctor, chop off my penis, and now you realize, hey, that was just a phase. I thought I was a woman, but I'm really a guy. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think that's why the standards are there. Um, like, you have to go through so much to get like the actual operation but there are zero cases of people who like changed their mind like none like it's never happened so it's like before you get to the by the time you get to the point where your your irreversible changes you you know i mean because let's face like you're you have to come out first and like seek this help so you've probably been carrying this for at least a decade like probably closer to two, statistically closer to like three or four, right? Like most people don't transition when they're super young. They come out in like their 30s and 40s, no. like when they're, they finally feel ready to deal with it. So like you, you, those are your hottest years you're missing out on as a woman though. I know, right? You get yeah. fucking jet. But it's got to be pretty <laughs> scary, right? Coming out and saying like, hey, I'm not, I'm not a man and now society is just looking at you. Oh, it's oh, fucking weird. terrifying. I mean, it's it's really, really terrifying. Um, like, coming out as gay has kind of become like this thing that people have normalized now, and that's awesome. Um, coming out as transsexual will still get you disowned by plenty of families. It'll get you beaten to death. Like, it's not a good time, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it just seems really confusing to, to me even, just like... It, I don't even know what to call you, you know? It, 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 I guess it's not evolved to where it needs to be, kind of like how gay is getting very like accepted. We can say gay, and, we can, and it doesn't offend anybody anymore, like, oh, they're gay, and that's a... You know, it's, it's very yeah. socially acceptable, yeah, but I think exactly. I hear what you're saying. Because it's, it's all right to have a gay friend, but if you have a transsexual friend and you're not in a kind of transsexual-type community, it's still... Now it's, it's weird, you know? I think it's still a little weird. I think it's much less weird than it was when I came out. Well, especially like, where you live, though. Even yeah. 10 years. I mean, you live in the best city for that more than likely, Exactly. Right? Like oh, Seattle, San Francisco. Austin's but, good where Austin's we live. pretty good, too, yeah. Uh, but even in Austin, I don't see a lot of, like, transsexual. No, they're down there, dude. You just no, I see the right them places. on 6th Street, but yeah. you have to go in the right these places. guys look like dudes. You so. see them, but you don't know. Juliet you looks like a, a woman. Don't pass. There's plenty that pass. Like, you would see me on the street, and you would have no idea. Yeah. You know what? You're, you're probably right. The ones I notice, it's like, 
th- this guy looks like Reggie Bush, you know. So we're looking. Yeah, we're looking oh, at your picture. Like we're actually looking at your picture here. This is all we're li- pretty much looking at while we're talking to you. So talk to us about what has been done, and are you still on this estrogen stuff? And have you got any plastic surgery? We think you have, but I don't is know. That, is that the picture where I have like the huge DSL? <laughs> Yeah, you yes. have DSLs and I your cleavage photo. is popping out big time, and there's yeah. some sort of pink curtain behind your head. Yeah, I um, I I just did my lips like right before that was taken. Um, the day before, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I've had my tits done. Um, I have my waist sculpted. Like I've always been wow. super super thin. Um, which as a result meant I didn't really have a curve to my waist. Like it was, it was just straight down. Mm-hmm. So I had them do lipo, like contouring for my waist. Around your midsection somewhere to make your waist look bigger, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like they just sucked everything down at my side. Okay. Even though there wasn't much there, it was enough to make some curves. Okay. Um, and I routinely try to get my lips done, but it's prohibitively expensive. Um, but I love having like really pouty dick sucking lips. So it's it's a vice. Like we all have to for the things we love in life, I suppose. Yeah, um, the, picture, the picture's a good one. We'll give you that much. We like you know, the, you. the picture. Just looks. It looks like a woman. I mean, just looks totally like a woman. So, Thank so you, you. now you sound like a woman. Is this something you have to kind of uh, actively put on? Let's say as a voice, or is that your natural voice, or do you have to concentrate and, and change your voice to, to, to sound like At this point, normal? it's my natural voice. Like, if I talk in my sleep, I sound like this. Really? Um, I mean, I'll sound tired, but so I'll the, sound like the this. The estrogen has done wonders, I guess? No. See, that's not the estrogen. What is that's, that? Um, Muscle memory? Usually, it's training. Like, you, you, you try to find, like, where your, your natural female voice would be. Like the difference in male and female vocal ranges is half an octave. That's it. Like you can, you have a wide range. And so you just have to find what sounds natural for you. And you just make a conscious effort to do it all the time. And eventually you just kind of retrain your vocal cords and whatever voice muscles you have. And there you go. Do you, do like, you ever kind of mess up and, and be like, hey, how are you doing? And then go into kind of uh, back in the old school days, like, hey, what's up? This is Juliet. So I've tried, like, out of fleeting curiosity, and I don't, I don't know how I sound like a retard girl trying to make a boy voice. Oh, like, right. so, so. Like, it sounds like this. <laughs> and I know that's not how guys sound. So it's like a woman just saying a guy voice. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so you've almost completely forgotten the person that, that you used to be. As far as your voice, yeah, definitely. Wow. I mean, the voice—the voice is. It, it's kind of like when I moved to America. I almost immediate. It's because I'm from India, actually. That's where I was born. I moved here at like ten, eleven years old, and I got made so much fun of for my voice. I immediately had an American accent, and it's gotten to the point where I can't. I, I sound like a, a white guy putting on an Indian accent. Like, hello, how do you do? You're like, I can't even do my <laughs> my old accent. <laughs> So I, I know where you're coming from. So how did you initially get into porn? Um, so when I was growing up, I got exposed to porn because of the Internet. Like I was born in 83. So I kind of was growing up at like the, the heyday of like Internet access in homes. And the Internet being what it is, uh, porn's everywhere. Even back then, porn was everywhere. Um, you had to like work much harder for it. It would take forever to download. Remember that shit? Oh, I know, I know. I had like it would a be pixels, and you were on the bulletin board system back in the day. Uh huh. Yeah, I just I, I tried to run my own bulletin board. Oh, uh, did you? <laughs> but um, so so I would look at girls in porn, and I'd be like, I want to do that. Like that, that should be me. Like I want to be that person. Like just getting banged, you mean? Yeah, like I want I want to be like the pretty girl with like jizz on her face and like a dick up her butt. Like that's that's what I want. Like you know, other people I guess like look at like. Neil Armstrong. You know, like, I told oh, yeah, my I dad that, that once. Ugh. I told my dad that once too, and he said, "Ugh." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, was, uh, I'm kidding. That's an appropriate, yeah. an appropriate response. So, what are the names of some of the porns you've been in? Anything stand um, out? They're all super originally named. Uh, transsexual prostitutes. I've done. I've done two of those. Um, I've done transsexual babysitters twice. I've done two of those. 
Um, I do a lot of web updates, so they're not necessarily on DVD, but let's see what else. I've done like American Shemail X. Um, like if our listeners want to look for you right now, and because and, you can get porn online, I'm sure. Is there any clips they can see you? Where would they go to see a clip of you? Uh, you would go to the Evil Angel website and look me up um, by actress name, by Juliette Stray. E-V-I-L? And you can see the scenes I've been in for Evil Angel, so and they're e- my favorite. E-V-I-L Angel? Yeah, Evil... I'll, I'll double check. Is that want. all trans women? On oh, that? no. Uh, they're... they're pretty much one of the primary porn companies period um okay. so they do a ton of stuff but that includes trans women yeah so go to evilangel.com or google evil angel porn and, and look up juliet stray if you want to see what she looks like in action yeah my uh, my two favorite scenes were for um the american shemale x series i did the first one like just american shemale x and i did um american shemale x3 with my girlfriend um, I was just fucking annihilated in both of them. It's great. Oh, so, take it, so just take us really quickly through that first favorite scene of yours. Like, give us what was going on. Is this a room outside? Where where are we in this scene? Okay, so so it's this. It's, it's me, and I'm like five six, about like one twenty, and this. I'm not even sure if she's five feet tall. She may be like four eleven, like ninety some odd pound, like Latina girl oh. named Liz Sierra. She's super cute, and she looks like she's like fourteen, okay. like like maybe fourteen. And y'all are in a room, and, I guess, on a bed. Um, no, so so we do, we set up the scenario like I'm getting ready to do a regular porn shoot, you know, and she's this Girl Scout coming up to the door, and she wants to like come in and like see what's going on because I guess in a previous movie that the director had shot, like he used her as the Girl Scout for like a blowjob so scene. Wait, did you order? Th- did, you, did you get Thin Mints or not? I did not. <laughs> I did not. Oh, um, man. So she comes in and, you know, like introduces herself to me. And like, I think it's weird that there's a Girl Scout in here wanting to touch me, but I'll let her because she's pretty. And then we just kind of fucked. <laughs> I mean, like that, that was the scenario. But then you um, said you got annihilated. Yeah, she, she completely plowed me. Like, Is she I, also I, a uh, trans woman? No, she, uh, she wore a strap on. I am... Um, and I mean, like, I fucked her pussy, too, and, like, I ate her out, but she also wore a strap on. Um, my my big thing, like, my favorite thing is being, like, violently, vi- violent isn't even, like, a strong enough word, like, ruthlessly um, face fucked. I love it. I love it so much. Um, and so there's a lot of that in that scene because it turned her on, too. Wow. So this is the annihilation that you're talking about. Are you talking about the face part or like the behind part? On my ass too. And I mean, she she plowed the shit on my ass, like, but also face. <laughs> like I'm a mess by the end of it. Like I look disgusting. <laughs> so so I, are you so, in pain the next day? Um, I mean, usually my throat will be in a little bit of pain because of how raw I like to get it nailed. Um, my ass is fine. The ass is pretty elastic, all things considered. Yikes. Hey, now, no, no, whenever I hear about the, the, the porn industry... This was Mike is going out. Hold oh, on. Man. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. Now, whenever I hear about the porn industry, I always hear how there's no money really left in porn. I know the men get paid pretty bad, and the women get paid more, much more than men. Where do you fall on that scale as a, a trans woman performer? That's, that's a super good question. Um, on, on average, right? Like if you're a girl going into the porn industry... I'm going to get paid more than you if I just entered the porn industry. Like if it was me and a girl and we entered at the same time and like, let's say we were exactly as hot as one another and we were willing to do the same stuff, I would make more money. So a trans woman makes more than a woman. In, in, in the lower tiers In the upper tiers of a woman, a genetic girl is going to make like a shit ton more than I will. Um, I'm not really going to be able to ask for more than like 2000 per scene unless I'm doing something like really intense, um, where genetic girls can get paid like a boatload. Do y'all ever get screwed over? Has that ever happened to you where you'll do a scene and then you don't get paid or, 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 or you get paid way less than you were promised? No. I, if that happened, that, that director would be blacklisted pretty, pretty immediately. Um, most girls book through agencies. I mean, if, if something like that happens, that's going to be like, 
to like a girl who doesn't know any better in like Ohio who like meets some guy with a camera and he's like, oh yeah, I shoot porn. Yeah, you should come over to my house and suck my dick with this porn. It, and, it, and then, you know. Is that a pretty good guy voice there. I think <laughs> the I tried to try super hard to do that one. <laughs> Are are those porns real? The ones you see on you porn, where it's like some guy, like it's his first time, and he's like, uh, "None of those things are real, dumbass." Come on, man. Yeah, but it, it, it's all staged. Where where it's like a girl, like it's her first time in porn. Oh. And he's like, "Hey, I'm just 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 perform here on camera. It's the first time." Uh, you know, yeah. you know which one I'm talking about. I mean, generally scenes where you're like, "Oh, it's the girl's first time in porn." They're probably the girl's first time in porn. Wow. Huh? Like, Wow. Sure. Yeah. I mean, sometime has to be her first time in porn, and like, it's a good thing to make a big deal out of. Um, I mean, some aren't like your stuff where you see a girl and it's like this girl's like barely eighteen and and blah. No, she's she's probably not barely eighteen, right? Like, right. Okay. That's, that's, what that's you're fudged. Saying. But like first scene stuff, you know? Yeah. Or like, oh, this is her first anal on camera. Yeah, that's probably true. And and who's who's looking at uh, transsexual porn? Is it generally other men or is it women? It's mostly straight guys, but I have a pretty large female fan base only because like a, most most trans women don't tend to like to have sex with women, and I do. Uh, so I have a, a female fan base as well. Do so you ever but do like the webcam stuff or what? I mean, do you, I mean, I've heard that like, webcams pay good money too and like all that kind of stuff where you're just basically doing it in your own house. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm trying to set up like a webcam studio in my in my bedroom. Sweet. I don't quite have it done yet, which is why we're voice only on Skype today. But um, I hope to have it up pretty soon. It would be really nice to basically hang around and like sodomize myself. And so get it's paid basically money. like an annihilation chamber. <laughs> that's, that's a good name for it, and that that's what I'm going to call my bedroom from now on. What's the, the hold up? Because you, all you all you need is a two hundred dollar laptop, and that's you true. already have an internet connection. That's the thing. I, I think I'm just going to have to buy a laptop. I have a very nice desktop that I built myself. Um, and I've been wanting to, to use that, right? Like I have a separate monitor I bought so I could like route stuff over to the bed. But like ultimately, yeah, like the like camera's This is like a nerdy not... trans woman here. God dang, man. She's got like monitors all over the place. It just wasn't, it wasn't sufficient. Well, I, I went to school for, for like engineering, like audio Damn. engineering, video stuff. That's pretty cool. So is it hard for a uh, trans woman to get a regular job? Um, for me, no. For a girl that doesn't pass, probably. Um, and I know a lot of people don't transition because they have like a good job and they're worried about losing it if they transition. And I think that's one of the things that, that makes people transition much later in life. Um. In San Francisco, it's not going to be an issue. Like, no, nobody cares. Nobody cares. So do you, you said you, you're a bartender, right? Or you bartend no, I, on... I, I'm looking at, at bartending. I oh, think okay. that would be fun. Yeah. I mean, gosh, it's... I actually, I just sent off an application right before you guys called me. But you're living in San Francisco, you said it's about seven years, right? Yeah. And to make it in San Francisco, I don't know if you know, Dizzle, but the rent is absolutely astronomical down there. And the cost of living is like crazy down there. You're getting double taxed because it's California. Um, so you must make a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, what I'm getting at is, you're making. Are you making enough to get by and then some? Or are you saving money, or how's it uh, going? I'm definitely not saving money. Um, <laughs> I, I basically make make it just month to month. Um, I'm fortunate in that I have a rent control department. Like I pay six hundred a month, which is absurdly cheap. Like, like unbelievably cheap for actually living in this city, especially in the part that I live in. Um. I should be paying something like like seventeen hundred. Yeah, because I, I've always heard nightmare stories about how rent is just nuts down there. It's it's offensively high, um, which is one of the reasons I can't move to LA because while their rent is cheaper, six hundred a month is still much cheaper than what I'd pay in Los Angeles. No, I, I can't give up this rent control department. I was reading that you also do escort services, right? I do. So how does that work? I mean, isn't that basically being a prostitute, or how do the how do you get around that? <clears throat> any money exchanged is for companionship services, and anything aside from that is between two consenting adults. So, so what, what are you talking about in terms of sleeping with people? Yeah. So uh, as far as that goes, how does that work? Do, do people get into that uh, where you're 
you're advertising as a trans woman or are they? Oh, if, if that were the kind of thing that, that I wanted to, like if I, if I were whoring myself, I would say that I were a trans woman up front. Absolutely. And, and that has its own market. So I think this was a little confused. So you go on a, your, uh, our view of escorts is that you pair up with people that want an escort, right? And mm -hmm. anything done between the two is just consenting adult stuff. But I think what Dizzle's trying to get at was, do they know that you are a trans woman before oh, they, they start, you know? Yes, right? Somehow. Yeah. But you don't. You said it's not on this whatever website you're part of or anything. That oh, no. If, if, I, if I were on a website, it would be on that website. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, I don't have any ads up. Uh, people, I rely on people just emailing me or knowing who I am. Mm -hmm. Um and that works out okay. You're mostly doing like dinners and events or what do you do? I tend to do overnight stuff, you know, like long term dates or like a dinner and drinks, you know, that kind of stuff. Males and females both or mostly males? It's only been guys. I would love to have a female client. That would be rad. But I don't see that happening. Are these married men? Um, I mean some are. <laughs> some are definitely married guys. Um Sometimes the wives know, sometimes they don't. So so you had a story also you were telling me uh, that you realized you were accidentally a street hooker at one point. Oh, yeah, that was so funny. Um, <laughs> so I used, to, I used to go to this public sex club and fuck everyone there um, because I had nothing else to do. <laughs> Wait, what is my... a public sex club? Um, it's this place called the Power Exchange in San Francisco. It God, is that just sounds like bonerific filthy. right there. Yeah, it's full of guys. It's Wait, full. is this like a uh, swingers club? Like older men with their wives showing up? No, it's, it's swingers clubs are like classier and nicer. This is just like a fuck club. And it's called right. a public sex club. Yeah, it's it's a public sex. club. And where do they advertise? Like, how do you find out about it? If where do they meet up? Is like, there one like in every they have, town? They have their own building. Like it's it's like a club. And it's like, legal, I mean, like club or club. how does it work? I, I'm sorry. Is this legal? Oh, yeah, it's totally legal. I mean, so is there one in every town, or this is kind of like a San Francisco thing? I mean, there's probably one in every, in every city. There's always, like, sex clubs. I mean, everyone loves to fuck. So people walk in there with clothes and then walk out annihilated? Well, I mean, some people. Mostly people walk in there with hopes and walk out disappointed. So it's mostly men, you're saying? <laughs> I would assume it's mostly men. Yeah, because mo so almost all sex clubs do not allow single men. This one does. So it's usually packed like it's a fucking soft <laughs> it's like And are these all like loser shit. guys or what? No, some are, some aren't. Um, I mean, there's definitely some loser guys, but there's also like some really fucking hot people that I've met there. Um, sometimes there's couples, sometimes other single girls. But what are the women that I would, because... be, I would be the most attractive person there, and so I could just kind of do whatever I wanted. And, and are they actual like real, real women there, or it's mainly trans women? Both. And they have little cutaways where people can bang and stuff? Or, like, how does this yeah, work? Yeah, but they're still kind of visible. It's like, people watch. Jesus. Like, there's nowhere private, what really. What the hell? I've never even so heard of weird. this. <laughs> yeah, you're, like, busting our, like, cherry here on the shit. What is the <laughs> name of one? Can I Google stuff? one? Yeah, the, the Power Exchange is the one in San Francisco. The Power Exchange? <laughs> it just sounds... Just... I heard about this club when I was in grad school out there. Oh, yeah? It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's their reputation. Uh, aren't there, like, different levels to it? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You know Different. what's up? Yeah. So, so the bottom level was like this dungeon level, mm -hmm. and then there's like the main level, what the fuck? and then the floor above that is couples only, and then the top floor is men only, like for gay guys to go do their gay guy thing. So if if Dizzle shows up there, I'm super shy, right? Back in the day, so I show up at this club. I'm a virgin. Dizzle's a virgin showing up. He just wants to 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 have sex. What what's the move? Um, I mean. The same way you would pick up a girl in a bar, like talk to her. But that's why I'm a virgin. I have no idea. So why would I even go to this place if I can just go to a bar? I figure like I'm guaranteed some, some pussy around here. Well, you're not guaranteed. I mean, there's tons of guys and there's going to be so many girls. So then girls what's the point like, uh, of going here? It's, it's just like a club. I don't understand. Wait, wait, wait. Are people scantily clad, though, in this place? Oh, yeah. People are scantily clad and or naked. Okay. So, so. Uh, Dizzle's got to show up naked. <laughs> you don't have to. You can. So, are they naked guys just walking around? I assume they have the biggest dicks in the in the place. They get 
they get a towel. Sometimes there's the completely naked guys, and yeah, usually they would have like something special. Yeah, there's no like growers, right, with small penises walking around. Those are generally covered with a towel. Yeah, well, I would cover with the more than a towel. Well, they, you're, you can. So do you um, see like a pile of chicks around a dude with like the biggest dong, or like how does it work out? Girls are attracted to what they're attracted to, and they'll fuck whatever guy they're into. So do you walk around like topless with your with your boobies and then no, your, your penis no. on the bottom? No, I feel like I feel like sexy clothing is sexier than being naked, right? Like being naked isn't really that interesting, but like the sexy clothes that like portray naked or like give the idea of naked that's way hotter. So you've definitely been in this power exchange and you've you've done anything and everything at that place, right? Well, I had. Yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of uh, uh, losing track of the story, right? So I used to go there. All they the have some in Vegas, too, is what I'm seeing on Dude, the Vegas website. Vegas has to be the second other place that this stuff would be really popular at. I swear it has to be. I'm looking yeah, at there, pictures. there is one in Vegas. They opened one in Vegas. Okay. Do, do, is there a memorable uh, encounter you've had here? There was. Um, I, I, this actually can be both stories. Uh so the first time I went there, I just kind of knew that it was like this club. And I, and I knew that they did like S&M there. And I, I didn't really know. Like I knew there was sex, but like I wasn't really sure how much, or like kind. So I've had like a point in my life. Like I'm, I'm probably like 22, 23. And I've had maybe, you know, only, only something like 24, 25 sex partners. And I have nothing to do on this Friday night. And I'm like, I know what'll make a good story. I'll dress up really sexy and I'll go to the sex club and I'll try to double my partners in one night. Like it's impossible. Like there's no way I'll double my partners. So you want to get 25 like, partners in one night. Yeah. And I knew that like, that's never going to happen, but I'm like, but it'll be a fun story. Right. And like, why not just go for the story? So I go there, you know, I, I don't really know like what to expect or anything. And, like, the moment I step in, like, this guy sees that I'm alone. And he's just like, hey, you know, you must be new here. Which I guess I didn't really intuit meant, like, I'm here all the time. And I don't, <laughs> I don't recognize you. And I recognize everyone here, uh, which is a little creepy. Um, and he's like, let me, let me show you around. And I'm like, okay. So the first place he takes me is, like, up to, up to like, um, what's normally the men's only floor. But it just so happened that I showed up on a night where all floors were open to all people. And um, I don't know if you guys know a lot about, like, what, what kind of thing gay guys like in terms of, like, sleazy hookups, but, like, the top floor is, like, catered to that, and that it's, like, this labyrinthine twist of corridors, and it's, like, super dark, and, like, kind of closed and cramped, you know? And so he leads me up to, like, like, this glory oh. hole, and I'm like, oh, because I really like sucking dick, um, and I'm like, a glory hole, you know, like, I've heard about these. And, and, um, it's set up, it's set up differently, right? Like you walk into this room and it's, it's got like, you know, 10 foot high walls maybe. And the glory holes are at head level. Like you don't kneel down. Like they're, they're where your face would be. (laughs) And there's no ceiling on the room. There's just uh, track lighting, and it's like red track lighting. So is the glory time. hole, uh, is this a pretty sturdy wall, or is it, if some guy leans on it, the whole glory hole wall <laughs> falls down and everyone's it's standing totally there sturdy. with their it's, dicks? It's totally sturdy because, <laughs> so the way it works is, on the other side, there's, there's steps leading up to a walkway, <laughs> and on the walkway, the guys are standing, and the hole is... But like is there cool. partitions between the guys, kind of like a urinal it's has those, or, or are they standing there. around looking at each other? Like, because... Like, I, I would not want to be at the other end of the glory hole, and there's no partition. I'm looking like three other guys, like with their dicks in the wall. Yeah, but you're well, also getting your you dicks sucked. If you want to look sucked, over though. at the other guys, you're welcome to. So, uh, but but it, where, like, okay, if I'm standing at the glory hole, right? So my uh-huh. dicks through a hole. Uh-huh. Well, is there a place for my eyes to look out, or am I just yeah, staring so at a wall? I'm getting to that, right? Because, like I said, there's the track lighting, and there's no ceiling. So you're on this wall, and you're on an elevated platform which means you can look over the wall. You can look down on who's sucking your dick. And you can look ah. down at whoever is down there, but if they look up, they can't see you because lights are in their face. Oh, You're just shit. a silhouette. But, but they can, can I, see everything about you. Can I see the guys next to me, like to the left and the right? If you look 
if you want to look over there. I mean, See, I guess that, if you go to a year, I would have to look. I can too, but yeah. But you got to understand why people are going there, Diz. They're not. They're going there to like open up their sexual. Like, yeah, everything. I guess they don't care. Like other right. guys are looking at their dicks and they're like, is I there? Mean, now, now, is is there guys that their dicks can't even fit through the glory holes, or they're different, different sizes, or there's just a pretty big, like giant size hole for everybody, like it's one size fit all. Um, I was saying, is 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 the glory, the holes in the glory hole? Are they like pretty big holes, or or do they have I mean, different they're, sizes? They're super big. Like, so I can, can stick my like nuts through there too. Easy. I'm sorry. Can I stick my nuts through there? Oh yeah, you totally could. There, there's there's a lot of room. Um, so so I'm in this room. <laughs> so so right? what do you go for? You see all these dicks hanging out of holes. How do you pick? I just picked. I picked the one that was in front of me. <laughs> um, so you really had no choice. It was just like, let me just keep walking straight ahead. Nope. Oh, here's here's a penis. Let me. Well, I was like, that's awesome. I'll put that in my mouth. So this guy just that's shows you around, but then you stop at this glory hole and you go at it. Yeah, I ditched the guy, and then um, I just went to the hole. And because guys look down over the partition, and they see that there's, like, a hot girl over there. So they just start lining up. So they I don't mean, know you're, you, you're a trans woman. No. And, I mean, I couldn't even tell them. Like, there's a fucking wall in the way, right? Right. But, you know, you stick your dick through a hole. Like, you get what you get. Thanks. Sorry, dude. Um, yeah, that's the risk. I think they're 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 that, that's actually. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at their website right now at powerexchange.com, and it says play at your own risk. So I guess that's a risk you're taking. <laughs> that's not what they mean, but you know it works. <laughs> yeah. Um. So because I'm trying to double my sex partners this night, right? I'm counting the guys that go, and I count, and I count, and I count, and over the course of about five to six hours. Um, and I mean, at this point, like, I've swallowed probably like 25 guys, like 10 of them have like just all over me. Like I'm, I'm drenched in it. Like it's all over me. Um, I can't even. Is this still, it, the, it, is like this still at the glory hole though you're talking about? Yeah, I'm still at the glory hole. God, she, no like, she glory. went to the first fucking place and just stays there all night. <laughs> like if I, I, I have to 47 guys. What? 47? 47. Jeez, th this place must just like be hitting capacity <laughs> on, the, on the fire marshals thing. If there's 47 guys going through a glory hole. She swallowed 10, though, I think she said. There's no glory oh, no, involved in this for me <laughs> if I'm sticking my dick through something that 46 guys have already come through. There's, there's no glory in this. I think that's pretty hot. So, so, like, I'm, I'm covered in probably 20 loads, like, all over my hair, my face like my upper body. Um, and the only reason I stopped, because I wanted to get to 50, like a nice round number, but the club closed, right? And here you are walking out with just sobbing well, so, so all I over you? I stumble out, and like, there's, there's this sensation. <laughs> it's just like fuck drunk. Like, I don't know if you've ever like really intensely banged, and then like you're just intoxicated. Um, I think girls may be more prone to getting like fuck drunk than guys because they can function post orgasm. But maybe it was like what you swallowed. Maybe that like upset your stomach, <laughs> and then you need some Pepto Bismol or something to get back to normal. Uh, well, you do, but that's <laughs> not sexy. Um, so, so like I kind of stumble out, you know, and I'm like I'm giggling to myself. Like, but were you, hold on, hold on. Are you drinking the whole time though? Like, how does are you like leaving the glory hole a couple times and getting going to the bar? Like, how does this place? There's no booze. There's no booze. There's no alcohol. You can't mix sex and alcohol. So did you go in there on E or what did you do? No. I went in there sober. You just went in there sober and went in a glory hole for six hours and you just left drenched and then that was yeah. your experience? Well, no. It gets better. Oh, right? shit. So, so I'm leaving and um, a guy who works there like looks at me and he has like this, this expression of like... Like, like you just watched a train wreck happen in front of you, and you're like, I can't look away from like all these dismembered body parts. But I, you know, I, I don't want to look. And he's just like, Jesus Christ! It's like I've never, I've never seen anything like like that. You look like you probably look like a candle that had been lit for the last hour at that point, that's right? Really good. That, that's good. That's that pretty much. So why didn't you take a like, picture well, of yourself? Um, no cameras allowed for obvious reasons. But like there. you said, you were walking out though, all covered oh, well, in this stuff. Again, let me get there. Um, but I was 22. This was back when like no, there were no smartphones. Like everybody had like a Motorola Razor. You remember those like the little flip phone? Yeah. 
Special K had one of those uh, back in the day, I remember. Yeah, so so I walk out. It's four in the morning. And I tried to clean up in, in the club. But the club is a sex club, right? So even the bathroom is, like, dark, you know, and they don't have, like, a lot of cleaning stuff. It's and, like no water. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, like, I splashed, like, some water, and, like, I kind of, like, dab with a paper towel, you know, and, like, how bad could it be? So I walk out, and I don't have a car because it's San Francisco, super normal. Everybody takes public transit. And so I'm waiting for the bus, and the bus comes. And so I get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and and the buses are lit with like fluorescent lights, right? Oh. And the moment, the moment I stepped in there, right, the first thing that hit me was the smell because I mean, it's like a giant warehouse in the sex club, and I don't smell anything. And then I'm outside, so I don't, you know, whatever. But then I'm in this, this enclosed vehicle, and you get to smell the jizz. Like there was so much cum, you could smell it. Oh. Like cum, cum has this smell like chlorine if there's enough of it like like it smells like a clean pool super weird um but it, it's true and so were you down. visibly covered in it and your makeup is well, smeared I looked down and i saw because i because i'm in like this bare midriff super low cut like slutty top like my tits are like on super display and like a mini skirt and you so already had fake it. boobs by then right i i had boobs by then yeah but it, and it's just like fucking everywhere like like i mean everywhere like my hair like is in like these matted like pseudo oh. dreadlocks like clumped together you know what about your makeup was it all smeared and fucked up oh it was fucked up beyond belief jesus and so i sit down and like everyone like and there's not a lot of people you know it's like 4 30 but like probably everyone like, else on there was the guys in the glory hole <laughs> riding they're like who's this chick <laughs> Um, I think it was just like like uh, people going to work, which is my favorite part about oh. that. Um, it's like they look, and again, like it's that train wreck thing. Like, except it was worse, right? Because they could really see me, and, they could and it was like you. they wanted to look, but like they were terrified of me seeing them looking. Like, like if I made eye contact with them, like it would meant like they they forfeited their first. Were you part. embarrassed at all? No, I thought it was hilarious. You should have just went to sit by all the like the cleanly, you know, dressed like businessmen. And be like, hey. well, everybody, everybody scooted to the back of the. So box. you were just by yourself, basically. You didn't have your yeah. friends with you or anything. You're just covered in jizz. She made everybody a do a Rosa Parks, dude. Everyone went to the back <laughs> of the bus. Yeah, everybody sat where the cool kids go. Oh, shit. Wow, very cool. Well, hey, Juliet, thank you so much for coming on the show. My uh, pleasure. And you, uh, people can find you at, at Juliet Stray, right, on Twitter? We'll be having yeah, you on I, again. On Twitter. I, I tend to talk to my fans on Twitter. I tweet about my new scenes on Twitter. Um, everything pretty much goes through Twitter. And when we get so. really big, we're going to have you come to our appearance if, whenever we visit San Francisco. So we sure. will definitely keep in touch with you. Uh, hey, can you do us a favor and record something that says, hey, this is Juliet Stray, trans woman, porn star, and you're listening to The Guy Spot? Sure. I'll, I'll record that and send it to you. All right. Very cool. Thank you so much. You guys have a good night. All right. Thanks Thank for having me. All right. Bye. Bye. That was crazy, man. <sighs> you all right, Dr. Wilson? <laughs> He's like, I can't say anything, man. I better get out of here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm sweating I, profusely. It's getting, it's, yeah, it's getting you look like you've been glory hold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't do a glory hold. There's no way, no way. I just kept thinking, I'm like, what do you mean, oh, like, gosh. do like get up to it and do it, or be in it? Be be the no. I'm not gonna be sucking any. Yeah, you penis. No, be. I can't stick my dick. Have some rent. Because look what happened. It's I'm sorry. I got nothing against transsexuals. I don't want my dick sucked by some dude. Sure, your dick wouldn't even make it past like the two by fours, and it'd just be like this <laughs> nub at the end. Like I just I kept thinking I'm so concerned about her health. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I'm like, she's got to well, get. After you swallow like ten or twenty loads, like that's the part that kind of fucked me up a little bit. I'm like that doesn't sound good. Yo, she was actually swallowing it. Well, I thought did, it was just spraying no, her no, face. No, no, no. She said she took in like mm -hmm. ten or so, which went right I was a little down her esophagus. That, <laughs> that can't be good for your digestive system. Yeah, I can. I can do the glory hole thing, man. There's no way. I think you'd take that back if you were like the Playboy Mansion or something. If this was Dizzle, like. Virgin Dizzle back in the day, like desperate to get laid, possibly, but I passed up some some ass back in the day just because I didn't think it was hot enough. So I don't think I would have done that because I'm not into just random sex with strangers. 
Yeah, but I think uh, all in all, it was a great interview. I mean, oh, we, we learned about awesome, a lot dude. of cool stuff. She, she was awesome. She's a nice lady. Uh, we're definitely going to keep in touch with her. And on top of that, we capped it off pretty good with learning about a damn club in San Francisco. It's Jesus, I'm looking at, and, and the most shocking thing out of all of this is Dr. Wilson knew about this club. <laughs> well, I, I, I went to school out there. So, I mean, I... In human sexuality, we learn all about these things. We have sex therapists coming in. Are you coming sure in. you weren't in a glory hole the, at some point? It shows them on the member list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, who's this? VIP, Dr. Wilson. <laughs> Why it's are you important in some of the for, pictures? As part of human sexuality, it's important for me to know these things. Um, so I was very, very glad that she was open to talking about it and clarifying things. I thought it was very informative and accurate. Um, I felt a little bad about her. Uh, I, I'm glad she clarified when I said... Uh, you know, I felt upset that she was saying she, it was, she felt wrong or, or there was something wrong with her. And it was not so much wrong with her. It was just she felt out of place in her body. And I was glad that was clarified. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm beginning to change my mind on everything. Because whenever I first found out as a younger man about transsexuals and stuff, I always thought it was kind of like a, a, maybe a psychological issue to where it, they're having confusion because i know i've had confusion on many matters not sexual per se but just other things and then as i grow older i kind of grow out of it or figure yeah, it you out you get more mature and you get more tolerant on yeah things. so i'm starting to really go on the side of maybe because there's billions and billions and billions of people six billion plus there's got to be a few people that not a few. That's a, a, there's going to be a small micro population that's confused about who they are. Well, it might not even be confused. Maybe it is something that is only happens in humans to where... Oh, I see what you're saying. But yeah. other am animals might have the same thing. You know, you just don't know it. They, yeah, because they can't express themselves. Exactly. You know? No, there's lots of animals that are bisexual. There's lots of animals that actually masturbate. But what I think what Dizzle was saying is like, are there the animals that know like I'm not supposed to be this gender in my fucking fur right now? Like I'm see, they don't be... have consciousness, so right. maybe that's, or maybe they that... do. We just don't know. Like, there's just so many things. Yeah. I think I think I see what you're saying. But I, I'm totally trying, uh, uh, starting to be on the side of it's. It's okay. No, I've always been. It's okay. It's like do what you want to do. It's just I. I always thought maybe it could be like a psychological issue where a man thinks he's a woman or a woman thinks he's a man. No, that was taken out of the diagnostic manual. So that used to be, uh, in the, uh, even homosexuality was like a, I don't remember what, exactly what they call it, but that was a diagnosis. So thankfully they took taken out and. Uh, the way that we can conceptualize it is like our sexuality and our gender can, in a way, be like a spectrum. Somewhere you fall along the spectrum. Right. So wow. Dizzle's straight, but... And see, I used to also, as a kid, go to psychiatrists and stuff, and I had some really bad psychiatrists to where they would just see me for two minutes and, and then take my parents' money to where I totally lost all respect for psychiatrists and psychologists. And now that I know Dr. Wilson and I know the, the knowledge he has and, and the amount of care he takes and, and I realize the kind of knowledge and experience that he's got that it really is something that, that, that is, is a true profession as well. Yeah, there's just like anything, there's bad, bad doctors and good doctors. So. That kind of reminds me, when I was in sixth grade, I actually got sent to a shrinker psychiatrist. Honestly, I did. They whisked me away from school one day, and my mom's like, "You're gonna go here because um, we we dad needs you to uh, just sit in this office and get observed." I'm like, "Okay, whatever." Were you having some kind of issues? Or there what? were some issues. Um, I think it was coming down to potentially uh, like theft issues. I mean, now looking back at it, I can honestly say like I was in the wrong. But there were issues where I was stealing from my father because he would always roll around with big wads of cash in his wallet. Especially New Year's Eve, right? Like, no, no, no. <laughs> but he would walk around with big wads of cash, and um, I would take some every now and then. So they threw me to a shrink. Like when you I say saying, take how much? Like what, what are you taking? Like five bucks? Three, four hundred dollars? I'm not going to comment anymore on this shit. What's <laughs> the most you've taken from no your way, dude. dude. You know what's weird? I find you such a respectable guy, and like, this was back I trust in, like, you. This is back to in middle school. To me, the most biggest wrong you can do is steal from your parents. There's nothing wronger than that, in my yeah, opinion. It's pretty wrong. So they sent me to a shrink. Let's just say it like that. And I just remember, like, vague memories in sixth grade. I go into this office. My mom puts me into this giant office, but there's only, like, one thing in the middle of this office. There's a dollhouse. 
<laughs> Why are you laughing? No, I, I just I know what you're talking about. Do you think you know where I'm going, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they thought you were gay. No, no, they put me. They're, they're like, okay, well, just wait here because your mom's gonna go talk to the psychiatrist for an hour, and I didn't fucking put it together till years later what they were doing. But they stick me in that room alone, and all there is is a dollhouse in the in the room with several stories on it, with all these little figurines. And guess what I do with the figurines? You steal them? No. <laughs> guess. Keep guessing. I don't you know. make them have sex? Exactly. Oh, really? I put them all in the nastiest positions ever. Get the, the hell out! I swear to <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? I was in sixth grade. Oh my god! Yeah, I put them in the, the most fucked up positions ever, dude. Like all over the kitchen counter, like in the bathroom, <laughs> like serious? one foot in the toilet, the other foot like up on the other thing, like and just going at it. Is and that what they're looking for on that scenario? No, they're, no, they were looking at me through fucking windows. Yeah. That's the thing. They're observing those. But what were they trying to do? Why would they put a dollhouse when he's just a to guy? see how he, it, the dynamics of what it's like? How I perceive like, his home, right? Oh wow! But no fucking was going on in my home. All so then now you made your parents look bad. Like there was some, some sort of weird. No, shit. there was just some weird shit going on. They figured some stuff out, and I got put on a couple. You know, maybe some medication, but. <laughs> my mom was now my ne- my mom never introduced me to the psychiatrist. She's like, okay, well, I had a discussion with the psychiatrist. We're gonna go now, and then I realized years later, like, fuck, all they did was watch me for a whole damn hour. <laughs> and I put these fucking dolls in fucking position. Oh my god, sixth just, grade. So you were like thirteen, fourteen. Oh, and that damn dollhouse. I can still look at it today. I'm like, fuck. I dude, put those things in the weirdest positions too. Bro. Oh, like, I would have made them fly around and fight each other. No, dude, you're making them fuck telling you i had issues back then i'm telling wow. you now, you're also on the onset of puberty so well that too i didn't like my see, father very i didn't much. know about fucking or anything back then i learned about that so late yeah but i'm just telling you man i dude, i don't know how they, they figured a lot of stuff out just from that one one hour did you stop stealing huh yeah of course why didn't you like your dad he seems pretty cool well he seems cool now but back then he kind of wasn't like ass whoopings or what? To the point where I was like, I would tell my mom on a regular basis, like, I don't think it even matters if he's living or dead. I don't like my dad. Because he'd whoop your ass? That and, well, he would whoop my ass until the day that I whooped his ass and then he stopped whooping that, my ass. Dude, that sounds like my dad. Oh, Jesus. dude, even in third grade, he whooped my ass. He told me this like 20 years later. Check this shit out, right? We're in a Starbucks in California just talking and we're just kind of making fun about how, oh, you just wait till you have your kids, son. You know, you're going to beat them. You'll see. And he goes, but I'll tell you a story real quick. He goes, we stopped beating you. Well, you don't probably even know this, but we stopped beating you because I beat you up so hard one day that um, the only way that I knew that I really damaged you is that your principal in your school called us a week later and said you hadn't said a word in class for a whole week. Uh, and at that point, he realized like something bad had happened. Now, here's the fucked up part. I didn't even know about that ever like i must have wiped something happened you see yeah. what i'm saying yeah. so wilson what happens there like well that's we were talking about this on the advice show um about so how traumatic yeah where... trauma trauma in the brain it gets shut down so it's not processed cognitively it goes possibly through like the uh the back part of the brain where it controls all your physical functioning and then the middle parts your emotions and once it hits there uh it doesn't get processed uh through the the insula it's a part of the brain that connects to the front and the, and the emotional part so in essence like he whooped my ass so hard it destroyed my memory for seven, <laughs> like, you, it was a defense your, for, your it brain. destroyed my memory for 20 years like yeah, I that's good that. though that's good because yeah. i remember every ass whooping, dude <laughs> and i had a lot of them dude and they were like ferocious like pointless ass whoopings like cha- <laughs> no like chased around the house there can never be pointless there are points no what sucked is my whooping. sister wouldn't get her ass whooped and she would just watch me get my ass whooped and couldn't do anything about it so she was like always the one like, hey, hang around watching me get the shit beat out of me. Because you're probably acting up, dude. <laughs> no, it was like pointless. I'm telling you, a lot of times it was just perceived acting up. Like, why were you three minutes late? Like, he uh, must be a bad kid. Let me look his ass. Thing, then maybe. maybe you're supposed to be prompt. And yeah. So the joke. fact that you forgot about it, I think is good. Because either that or uh, that shit is hard, dude. <laughs> like remembering back on like ass whoopings. But I can't even remember that I got ass whooped. I can't the, even remember that I didn't talk for a week in class. That's what's weird. Yeah, I don't know any of that. Happened. So, like, if there's audience members listening, like, dude, I got my ass whooped too. Like, no, you. If you didn't really get your <laughs> ass whooped like Indian style, dude, like, like straight up bashing, beating, dude. I saw a video the other day on the internet. It was just this this dad like whooping his kid's ass back and forth and it brought back memories i was like god damn dude how can you do that to a little kid and then i realized shit that was happening to me 
That's fucked up. Because as an adult, I see that. I get so angry at that dad whooping this kid's ass for, for like 10 minutes straight. And it's, it's just, I get this rage. And then I realize, fuck. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that little kid was me too, man. So how do we go? From, how do we go? How did we go from glory holes to fucking get our ass? What was what I want to know? I'm the ass whoopings I got. I should be standing in a glory hole <laughs> sucking some dick right now. Oh, you know, I'm doing pretty good for I, the I'm ass like whoopings I got. I'm trying to figure out how bad yours were compared to mine because I remember. What's so the worst much. ass whooping you got? Me? Like, have this is the word. The, this might not be the worst ass whooping, but this is so wrong. Like my, like, like, my dad would chase me around the house, and if he couldn't get a hold of me, he'd try to, like, throw shit at me, like baseball style. And if he couldn't hit me with that still, he'd just wait till I'd fall asleep, and then he'd just sneak up, and I'd, oh, I'd wake up to my ass getting beat. <laughs> wow. Like punches thrown? Yes. Or, like, belt <laughs> off, and you're getting lashed? Like punches thrown. Punches don't hurt so more like, than belts, dude. Belts are the worst of all. I got belts. Belts are hard, man. But belts, what happens with belts, you feel that initial sting and it's then they go very away. very painful. <laughs> belts <laughs> leave fucking welts, though. Yes, they do. I went to yeah. a corporal, pun- corporal punishment uh, middle school? school as well. Yeah. yeah, I went to an elementary. Where they believe in paddling. Like, Dude, I got the worst I remember is this coach picked me up by the neck. It was assembly. Like, you know what assembly is? It's yeah. like the whole school gets together for whatever reason. And this was a school from... Uh, kindergarten or first grade up till 12th grade. This was one big all men's school, right? And it was like a Christian school I went to in India, Catholic school. And I don't know what I did. For some reason, I was the guy the teachers like to whip ass, or maybe I was just a bad kid. I don't know. I wasn't a bad kid. Maybe I just talked too much. I don't know what it was, but I still remember it was the assembly outside, right? And they would whip your ass with whistles, dude, which is worse than anything. Damn. Like, and these are like big ass, like, I guess they're almost like belts, like the big thick whistle uh, thing that goes around your neck. Uh-huh. And I remember this coach, he was this skinny guy, but like, I don't know how to describe it. Have you ever seen like a super skinny guy, but when he flexes, you see like every striation in your muscle, like ever. It's just like it's super like ripped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, think of me, but like even more ripped, like just super fun. Like you see like the lines, like in the bicep. This guy was like that, like sinewy, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Okay. I just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what I did. It was almost like, you ever seen that movie Full Metal Jacket where he's walking around, like looking at the line of people <laughs> and like somehow he doesn't like the guy's like jacket or whatever. And he's like, come here right here. And he, so it was just us all lined up. I guess I was a little out of line. He finds me, dude. I don't know what. He says, come here. He, like, flicks his finger at me, right? And then he gives his whistle to the other coach. And this little skinny fucking asshole, I still remember his face. And I must have been, like, fifth grade. Picks me up by the fucking head, dude, a fifth grader, right? And now I still feel like my whole neck and everything, like the little whatever this portion is on your spine, what is this called? By between, right under your jaw, like the little spine part that connects to your shoulder. It's filter rib. Your fucking rib cage or what? Your, your fucking spine, dude. It was my spine. I could feel like that thing about to just rip off so of my head. So he's trying to do like a fatality to you. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's much. holding me up by my head, like by the ears, like cupping <laughs> by the ears. and Oh, God. And I'm just sitting there like, completely frozen because i feel like if i do any kind of movement like my neck's gonna snap off like it's my whole weight of my body being supported by my neck (laughs) right and this other coach is just like starts like for like probably about 30 seconds just whipping my legs right with with the belt and i can't even breathe i can't move and i just have to take the pain like completely motionless because i'm like if i make any movement my neck might snap and then you cried when he let you down no, I don't know what I did. I don't think I made any kind of sound or anything. That's the worst I've been. Shit. Whooped. And it's normal there. That's Maybe like, you did cry. You just forgot about it. I don't think I did. See? I wouldn't really cry Maybe when I got my ass kicked. such a hard kick. ass whooping like mine that you forgot about it. I would cry when my parents whooped my ass, but that was more emotional than it was like pain. I, like, I don't feel pain, really. I've broken bones where I don't give a shit. <laughs> Seriously, like I'm immune to pain at this point in my life. Like I don't cry over physical pain it's good to know you don't cry over shit i That's do cry cool. emotional <laughs> shit man so but yeah this is getting depressing dude <laughs> are we done with like <laughs> ass whooping stories or what <laughs> i don't even know if we have time for metalhead you want to read some uh listener emails before we get out of here yeah sure 
All right, so I got one from this guy, John Galvan. I can only call it Confessions of a Repentant Troll. That's what I call this email. It's that big one, right? Yeah, it's a long one, but it's good. So and I remember this guy, man, back in before I, 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 I stopped doing the show last time. It was so, so he writes, Hey, man, I want to start by saying I'm sorry because I have to confess being a complete asshole. I'll keep this as short as possible. Basically, I've been listening since the show was called A Men's View when I was doing this internship at an insurance company. I used to get bored at work and would check podcast alleys for new shows to listen to. I eventually caught on to The Men's View and got hooked. I even started downloading the old episodes of uh, Jesus and Homie. Basically, when the show ended because of Amaya 4000 and the other co-hosts fighting with you, I picked sides like some of the other listeners. I decided to start getting into Dirtbag Radio. I guess I was just a bitter fan because I didn't get to listen to the show anymore and had to settle for whatever Amaya 4000 was putting out since he took the majority of the cast with him. Sounds completely stupid, I know. It gets worse. I was so bitter that when I heard you started up a new show with all the new co-hosts, I went out of my way to talk shit on your forum. I was being a hater, and I can see that now. Uh, I went on there and started talking trash and just came off like a jealous weirdo. I'm really sorry for all this, and I wish I didn't do that. Anyways, I eventually started wanting to help Amaya 4000 get his show bigger, so I started doing graphic design for him, and the dude totally neglected to properly shout me out on his podcast or even upload the images correctly. So by this point, I stopped listening to Amaya and all the stuff about banging strippers and smoking weed all day. I kind of got the feeling that if I was going to get myself into a better place in this world, I can't do it if I'm feeding myself all of this guy's negativity and nonstop drug talk. Eventually, I start having financial issues and am hopping from job to job. I land a gig that keeps me decently paid but pretty busy. So naturally, I start listening to podcasts to make the day go by faster. I think six months goes by and my wife tells me she's pregnant. So naturally, I get motivated to start acting less like an immature kid and more like a man. I'm 24 years old and I kind of ask God I'm a Christian to help me give up pot and find a way to be more positive. First thing, I start listening to sermons, and this pastor starts talking about owning up to your mistakes. Around the same time, I actually start to give your new podcast a listen, and well, I start noticing that you guys are talking about positive lifestyles and how to get your life together. Basically, I know you don't talk about God or religion on the show, so I'm not going to assume anything here, but I will say that I have a feeling Jesus wants me to apologize to you. So if you're still listening at this point, I appreciate it. This is where I start to get humble. As I start listening to the show, Bonafide is talking about flipping antiques for spare cash, and I start to take his advice. My son was born around six weeks ago, so I'm looking for side hustles to make extra money for my family. I decide to do what he says and hit up a garage sale right out of the gate. At the very first garage sale I visit, I find an antique fan worth like three to four times what I ended up paying for it. That's when I really start to feel guilty. Back when you started the guy spot, I spent at least a month or so just trash talking your show on the internet without even giving it a chance. Then I randomly listen in and I basically use it to earn myself an extra bit of cash. If I were to just keep it moving and not acknowledge the fact that I owe you guys an apology, I feel like I would be earning some of my God's wrath. Guys, I just wanted to say thank you for putting out a podcast that is funny but is also helpful to regular guys like me. I am thankful that I stopped listening to the other show and quit using drugs. As soon as I did that, I stumbled upon your show and good things started happening to me. I'm really, 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 really sorry for being a dick. And if you ever need help designing any logos, please let me know. It's the least I can do to apologize for myself. That's pretty cool. That's I will really be calling awesome. that guy um, for graphic design, maybe on my book or something. Yeah, but the, if you don't upload it right or give him a shout out, yeah, he's, no, 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 he's going to flip no, out. No, 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 no. No. I'm just kidding, John. You know what? We were actually talking about doing some kind of logo for our show. I don't know if he does actual – because there's two kind of graphic designers, the guys that actually can design. Like You're like, man, I'm looking for this in a logo, and they put on an actual logo, and then there's guys that just know how to do like – Let's see what he can do. Illustrator. So, yeah. Hey. You know what? We'll, we'll test you out. Give us a design for the guy's spot, whatever you think would be cool. If we don't use it, we don't use it. You know, Don't get mad at us. We're, we're trying to get the best design we can. But we appreciate the email. And I knew it was you all along, dude. I'm, I'm like a hacker boy. I got your IP traced. <laughs> I knew it was John Galvan, but it's cool, dude. I'm glad you apologized. Uh, and I want to add something and else. And I'm really happy that you're able to get your life together because that's what this podcast is about, man. We joke around and we... 
we we uh, have some crazy guests on from now and then, but we're here to learn and improve ourselves as people. I hope he also listens to one where I was on earlier pitching the stuff about the uh, mindful parenting, the books and resources. Since he's got a new uh, new one, so. yeah, definitely. You want to be a good dad, John. So uh, check out the the advice show also that this aired. We'll put a link on this page. Uh, this week's episode, so you can uh, also check out Advice Show. And one last thing, um, there's a lot more where that came from. If you do check out my YouTube channel, The Bonafide Hustler, you're going to see every one of the videos that I put out that will help you make side money. It's guaranteed to make you side money if you just have a brain and put things together. And it sounds like you're already were well on your way to doing some side hustles. There's a lot more money where that came from, trust me, and there will be a book out soon that we will be promoting on this show. Yeah, dude, your channel is blowing up, and I tell you what, man, you're making a lot of people extra money just from basically doing nothing, dude. Like it's all over the not world, doing man. nothing, but just putting a little effort into what you teach them. That's insane. Last week, I had some people from Netherlands saying, "Man, you're so badass at what you do." I had a guy from Sydney yesterday saying, "Hey, my garage sale season is about to start up." I mean, it's just all over the world, and people are realizing like this is a loophole, a legit loophole where you can make money. And yeah, you don't it's have funny. To be tied There's to like anything. You don't have to report to any bosses. This is something you can start this weekend. You can start hustling immediately. So go check out the channel, The Bonafide Hustler, on YouTube. Yeah, just go to YouTube. Type in Bonafide Hustler Chris. Yeah, Bonafide Hustler Chris. His mic just cut out, but yeah, Bonafide Hustler Chris, and you can check out YouTube Hustler on Twitter. It's funny because there's so many guys on the internet claiming they can make you money, and it's all bullshit. Dude, it's insane. And you're giving this away for free right now. For now, yeah, it's all free right now. Get it's your gonna... fucking book out so you can charge some fucking money, dude. This is like <laughs> legit, like crazy advice where there's people making. Remember like that fucking first time? Fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. Like you doing actually this. put your brain together, like what? Four months ago, uh, and you hustled those Bob that. strollers. Oh my and you made God. six hundred dollars in a day. Six hundred dollars in one day, dude. Fuck. Just get your book out so I can read that shit. I get it for free, right? Yeah, you're getting it for free, of course. All right, cool. And then Guy Spot listeners will probably get a discount, I hope. They will get a discount, indeed. And then we need to get that YouTube channel going so we can get, first of all, get our listeners money. Secondly, get their bodies in great shape. That way they're feeling fit and they look awesome. Yeah, but before we do all that, honestly, we're going to get the Guy Spot as a prominent thing in the YouTube community. So look for that in the near future. We're going to be working with Google+. Plus and making sure that we can have live shows where you can actually visually see what's going on and uh, connect with us a little bit better. What do you think about that, Dizzle? I think he's, he's been um, trying to do this for the past two weeks, and we're really, really getting close to getting a live, actual YouTube show going. Yeah, we got to get something going on YouTube because that's part of the future. You know, we got this live stream going. Event, my eventual goal is, hey, every single day we have like a Howard Stern type show where – where we got guests in the show, we got like uh, crazy people coming in, and it's all on video and audio, and it's streaming live, dude, every morning. Yeah, so don't and forget. And then if you can't listen to it, you just download the podcast. Yeah, so don't forget to ever, you know, don't forget to, uh, when we have uh, Amazon links or merchandise such as posters, t shirts, don't forget to support us. All that stuff's going to go into video and audio. Yeah, because if see. we can't figure out a way of living off of this, this is not going to get any better. And then eventually one day we'll just have to stop because we got to. Uh, concentrate on on making a living you know so uh the best way to help us right now is just go to the guy spot.com t-h-e-g-y-s-s-p-o-t dot com and if you're buying anything off of amazon.com ever just go there and look on the right side there's an amazon link just click on it and type in whatever you're buying, and it's not going to cost you a penny extra, but we'll get like 1% or 2% of your purchase. And then if you want to really promote us without spending any money, just go to iTunes and rate our podcast. Yeah, so the, we're still, we're up to like, I think 27, we're up to like 60 ratings, but uh, you got to review us at five stars to be entered into the uh, contest, which we're at 27 right now. So when we hit 100, we're going to draw a name out of a hat, and you're going to get a... Uh, uh, tablet a, 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 a google nexus. nexus 7 you know and if this takes forever that tablet will cost me like 10 bucks you know and i'll be able to so, <laughs> so hurry up it should i know we got more than 100 listeners so if just 100 of you went in there and it's already at 27 so if you have not reviewed this just take the two minutes okay review it and you got to you got a one in a hundred chance of winning a pretty badass uh, but it must tablet. be a five star review. Yeah, those are you can rate it whatever you want. Be honest how you feel about the show, but if you don't give us five stars, you're not part of the contest. You know, we got to have some kind of uh, rules for the contest. And uh, 
Also, add us on Twitter at the guys spot T H E G Y S S P O T. We love reading your listener email. Uh, so send us email. Just search uh, the guy spot on on Facebook. Email us there, or our email address is t h e h t h e s h o w the show at the guy spot dot com. All right. So anybody have anything to add, Doctor Wilson? Uh, thanks for having me on again. You got your uh, book coming out anytime soon? Um, yeah, we're working on uh, the publishing aspect of it, but a couple months, hopefully. All right, guys, we're out of here. Later. Peace.